It means we're going to be live. All right. Yes, here we go. Uh, we're now officially live streaming here uh, at Red or Green Books on the Facebook page partnered with the word is right, W-R-I-T-E. So thank you all so much for being here. Uh, today is a book, a book reading uh, with the contributors of American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence. Uh, we have our literary book, which is 200 pages, 67 contributors from around the world. We also have a full color art book, 50 pages. It is just an absolutely beautiful book. Uh, they're both available for purchase on the website red or greenbooks.com. Red is R-E-A-D, uh, poetic license. If you would like to purchase both of them together, they're only $40 together, which is just an absolute um, awesome deal, I, I think. So please, if you would like to support the press, grab a copy uh, or get a copy signed from one of the contributors. Between these two books, we have 26 states and eight countries represented. It's a pretty big feat. We also have a sponsor a senator program. So if you go to the website, you can click. Uh, we have every state plus Washington, D.C. Uh, there's uh, only two books assigned per state. So if you you know, if, if it's sold out, please just pick another state uh, where we will send a copy of American Graveyard to a U.S. state senator. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a couple housekeeping things here. I'm going to mute everybody. I don't know if that's going to mute me or not. Cool. And I'm going to um, disallow the unmuting of everyone. And I'll just invite each of the readers to unmute when they read. And that's just to kind of keep the room quiet. And should someone come in who uh, has malintent or malpurpose for this uh, event today, they, they can stay the hell quiet <laughs> and not bother us because we got some reading to do today. All right, um, that being said, today's topics are gonna be around gun violence. Uh, it can be any topic you want, it does not have to be from the book, can be new stuff, old stuff, someone else's stuff. It doesn't have to be your stuff uh, as long as uh, it is just on the topic of gun violence. So there are no trigger warnings because that is pretty much all the trigger warning uh, you're going to get for today. Um, if you have not had a chance to go to the website yet, please, please do so. Uh, you'll find all of the information for American Graveyard. We have put together a community outreach committee uh, with participants and contributors in the book. And so we're working right now partnering with other organizations that are in the same uh, vein and purpose as gun violence. And uh, so hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of things happening uh, with connecting and network, ne networking with other organizations. Uh, we're also looking for this book to get nominated for a bunch of uh, incredible book awards. So please, if you have ideas or you find something you, you think would be a good fit, let me know and we can move forward and try to get this book nominated for a lot of amazing things. All right, uh, coming up here at Red or Green Books, we have the 2023 New Mexico Poetry Festival. Uh, we have 24 featured readers. We also have dozens and dozens more poets flying in here to uh, be part of the show. It's a three-day summit, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, September 8th, 9th, and 10th. If you've not got your tickets, please do so. Come to New Mexico. We are part of the U.S. <laughs> you don't need a passport uh, to come down here. It is a lot of fun. And it's going to be a beautiful show. So many incredible poets are going to be here. And so let's go. All right, I got four minutes to read. And then Leonard, you are first. Robert Fleming, you're in two. Edward Galt, you're in three. Uh, this is a new poem I wrote titled Nashville 2023. This is for the parent who sent their kid to school that morning. This is for the school doors not being bulletproof, for the staff who were on the other side of campus, for the phone call that couldn't connect immediately. This is for the 911 operator relaying tragedy. This is for the police car that got stuck in traffic and the officers who did not hesitate to rush in. This is for the children afraid. This is for the teachers afraid. This is for the parents who didn't know yet. This is for the size nine t-shirt that was not Kevlar. For the hand that tried to stop the bullet. For the bone that didn't mean to break. The blood that didn't mean to drain. The muscle that didn't mean to shred. The breath that didn't mean to quit. This is for the heart that didn't mean to stop. This is for the cereal that didn't mean to be a last meal. This is for the adrenaline that couldn't fix it. 
This is for the EMTs who couldn't arrive fast enough, for the paramedics who couldn't work a miracle, ER doctors with not enough blood transfusions, and the surgeons who could not say, your baby made it. This is for those who discovered the bodies and those who delivered the news. This is for the bullet that never wanted to be born to cause death. This is for the gun that never consented to slaughter. This is for the white crosses and red mylar heart balloons, for the candlelight vigils and families that lost loved ones. This is for the coroner and the casket, for the death certificate and the burial. This is for the grieving ground saturated with blood and all who will die tomorrow. This is for the poets who document the loss. This is for all the stolen futures, all the dreams never to come true, for all the empty beds and dinner plates and all the grief and tears and rage. This is for those who run towards danger and those who look the other way, for the lawmakers who get loud and protest and those who haven't lost enough yet. This is for the change that must come. This is for love not being enough. This is for the heartbreak and the hope we are losing more and more every day. And that is for Nashville. Uh, all right, so we're gonna keep going. Um, these are, uh, 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 excuse me, 10 minute sets. So feel free to take any and all of that time. If you need to know how much time you have left, just let me know. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you don't have to take the full 10. And if you go over a minute, that's okay. But just try not to go to like 15 because we're, it's a tight ship today. If you would like to be on the list, but you're not, let me know. And I can put you in should there be a no show. So thank you so much. Y'all can um, unmute your mics. Oh, let me see if I can unmute everyone and uh, give it up for Leonard Lund, everybody. Woo yeah, yeah. All right. And good afternoon from just outside Chicago. Hey, Chicago. Okay. Let's take these oh, chronologically. Sorry, Lenny. I might have unmuted you. Okay. We got me. Yeah, we got me. Okay. Let's take these chronologically. 2014, Articles of Faith. Two church school girls on the stoop, laughing about the boys, trading confidences, then bleeding in the crossfire of rival gangs. On the waters of an alien coast, four Bible passers taken by pirates, then torn in the crossfire of rival bands. In the suburbs of an uncivil war we call the fighting, a family of prayers then silenced in the crossfire of rival armies. Perhaps then it is true. The devil rules the world and no good things go unpunished. 17 June, 2015 and others. Gunshots don't ring out. Freedom rings, coronets. The voices of Sabbath choirs, table graces, children at prayer, these, I will agree, ring out. Gunshots explode, thunder, thunder flesh from blood, echo down the halls of ages as they remind us of loss in every firecracker overheard. Gunshots salute. Pay semi-holy tr holy tribute to our victory over them, to more of them dying than us, whether the war is institutional or against our own individual targets. 12 June, 2016, and again, we get it wrong. Yesterday's heat has given way to moderation, and I'm out front down on my old stiff hands and thick aching knees, tending the varied wealth of our flower beds. Last year's rows of Sharon volunteers need cleaning out. Before they root so deep, I'll need a spade and back brace, or maybe dynamite. There are days I'm almost frustrated enough to blow the place up and 
start all over again. But don't worry, ain't gonna happen. I know better than to do that, but I swear this process will take forever. Meanwhile, it's five days before the first anniversary of Charlotte. And down in Orlando, the cleanup crews aren't even starting to get ready. The crime scene will take a week of forevers to process. A score dead, two score wounded, somebody with a score to settle. When they get fed up enough with whatever they're personally self-righteously fed up with, some folks just want the sound of gunfire to start over, to raise their spirits up and strike the others down. Why does the wrongness of this take forever to process? 2023, the state of Georgia salutes. The plaque lists the numbers of American prisoners of war and those missing in action for seven wars from 1775 to 1991. It's an admirable memorial, modern on a brick wall and a rest stop along Interstate 75. Collateral, adjective, related but secondary. There are few mentions of civil deaths, civilian deaths in the Revolutionary War ignoring the proposition that all wars are revolting. Summing up various sources, there were probably less than 200. In the war between the states, George's name for it, not mine, approximately 5,000. World War I, around 10 million. World War II, between 50 and 55 million. Korean not officially an American war, 2 million to 3 million. Vietnam, perhaps as many as 2 million non-combatant men, women, and children. Persian Gulf, maybe 100,000 to 200,000. The plaque hasn't been updated since it was put up. God forbid we should talk about collateral issues, about indigenous people, the enslaved, all the unmentionable and forgotten conflicts since day one of America, about suicide, about gang violence, about domestic violence. This is the sixth month of 2023, current era. American civilians killed by gunfire on American soil this half year, only about 14,000. There is no salute to them. And finally, elegy. Dig the small grave and place the smaller body so, just so. The chill may rain and the warm human tears falling on her head will serve for the ritual washing of this pup, barely two days old. Some future digger after truth, alien or human, kneeling with trowel and brush at this grave, will note in clear, careful script, the wonder that a people would be so deliberate with the smallest of their God's creatures and so careless of themselves. Thank you. Oh, let's go, Leonard. Uh, did you did you have another one or was that it? Okay. All right, we're gonna keep rocking and rolling. We, the list is long, uh, but I'm so excited for everyone who is here to read. All right, uh, next up we have Robert Fleming uh, who is going to do a, sh a share screen as well. So let me fix that. And I will invite, um, oh, let me, let me pull the spotlight off. <laughs> if I forget to do that, y'all let me know, please, because like, um, I forget sometimes to do that. All right, so Robert, I'm gonna spotlight you. I don't think it's gonna change the screen share. Okay, perfect. Anyways, oh, and I also have to invite you to unmute. So let me change my view real quick because screen share always changes my... Has to... I believe I'm unmuted, is that correct? Okay, perfect, then that works, awesome. Yeah, the screen share kind of threw me off because 
I was looking elsewhere, but uh, take it away. You've got it. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Fleming, a writer and graphic artist from Delaware. I was one of the artists included in American Graveyard, the art book. Uh, my concept for the two uh, graphic pieces I did is what would be a physical condition which would prevent a person from being able to pull the trigger on a firearm. My first concept was a medical condition I learned about. It's called um, syndactyly. It's when the, the hand, either the skin or the bones on two or three fingers are physically connected. And I, am, I imagined that if you had syndactyly, you would not be able to pull the trigger of a firearm. So it's called survival of the fittest hand, uh, strike out, hand pulls gun trigger, syndactyly hand, strike out, pulls gun trigger, syndactyly hand survives. And my second concept was um, another condition which I learned can happen to anyone. It's called a trigger finger. And it's when typically the middle index finger is pulled in and will not extend um, uh, horizontally. So here I showed the image of a person with trigger finger where the finger could not pull the trigger of a firearm. Um, the, the second idea I'm going to share is uh, my feelings about strangers, which is I when I meet a stranger, especially if they want to help me, I'm very suspicious of them. And it's made it hard for me to accept love thy neighbor because I've been reluctant. I'm usually afraid to uh, let my neighbor um, give me love. Um, this is my first text piece. It's called Test of Fall. We are walking on a path toward each other. Did you plant a GPS tracker in my butt? How did you know I would fall into a ditch? Your bystander right hand reaches for my left hand. Extend my hand. And this is a graphical representation of the same concept of uncertainty of whether you're going to view your neighbor as a friend or foe and have fear. Um, it is inspired by uh, the Robert Frost poem, Mending Wall, which has the line, fences make good neighbors. Fences aren't enough when a weeping willow weeps over a border collie digs under. A seven-year-old boy shortcuts. A wind eye blows a trampoline. Fences are too much when you need a cup of sugar. Your bowl lost its thrust. Your child meets the boy next door. You have a 3 a.m. heart attack. And the last, uh, the last idea I wanted to share was uh, tolerance. I, I grew up in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. My parents were uh, white, English-speaking Jews. And they mostly made me have contact with people just like me, even though Quebec was 80% uh, French speaking. I didn't have one friend who spoke French, even though I spoke French. This is the place where I met other French children. It is a skating rink in Montreal called Mount Royal. And this is my poem, Neighbors from Across Town. 
I am from drooling SpaghettiO sauce onto a white t-shirt. Mama, oy vey, take off that t-shirt now. I silently run out of the kitchen. I am from Montreal's Westmount. I schooled at the Roslyn Red Brick Schoolhouse. I tell my Sharshimayim Sunday school teacher, Pipi, and run to the monkey bars. I am from trimming my room's blue shag carpet and strum a white Fender guitar with reverb set to 10. Where are you from? In the synagogue playground, we play tag. Ari has cream skin, speaks English, and pushes me to the ground. The kids are where I'm from. At Park Royale, a, a girl with laced white black ice skates glides into my red and white Canadian hockey shirt. Girl screams, Garçon, stupid. Boy, not stupid, Guy Lafleur. Girl, Jocelyne Ballerine. Girl wears a gold necklace with a cross and a blue wool hat with a pom-pom. Girl laughs. Do yes at me. Boy, don't care where you're from. Girl figure eights three times around the rink and pushes my back. Girl sings, Jocelyne vient de l'église. Boy, from church, I drop my hockey stick, speed skate to Jocelyne, put my right white mitten in Jocelyne's left blue mitten. Je m'appelle Robert. Thank you for letting me share my art about the conditions where you wouldn't be able to shoot a gun and my feelings about my neighbors and tolerance and children. Greetings from Delaware. Oh, wonderful, Robert Fleming, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Welcome, Diane. Murray Ward is in the room. Uh, so excited we're going to be hearing from her as well today. Uh, so poets, the slots are 10 minutes. You don't have to take the full time if you do not want. If you're not on this list and you would like to be on this list, uh, just let me know, please. And um, I can get you on the list. Maria Perez, nice to see you. Uh, good to, to have you here today. All right, Edward Galt, I have you up next, followed by Bruce Whitaker and then S.Z. Putnam. Those are the next three poets who I have here. And if you were wondering how much time you have, just let me know. I will keep track of that for you. If you go over a minute or two, that's okay, but just not too much because, you know, then that backs everyone up if everyone does that. But uh, feel free to um, t uh, read anything you would like today uh, related to gun violence. It does not have to be your own work. It does not have to be what's in the book, but that is the theme uh, for today. If anyone has any questions, please let me know. You will see that you are not able to unmute, and that is just to help keep the static uh, down. But I will um, unmute each of you as you come up to read. So let me double check everyone is currently muted fabulous all right so uh edward where are you edward uh there you are let me ask you to unmute sir and i will spotlight you for everyone okay well thank you very much um this piece is called war games i just have one little historical note um combat was a tv show in the 1960s, for those of you who didn't grow up during that period, <laughs> um, may not know of it, but uh, it was in, I think, black and white, but maybe I was just watching it on black and white TV. But anyway, at <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. any rate, um, just because I mentioned it in the poem and I want everyone to know, understand what it was exactly. Uh, okay, okay this, is, this piece is called War Games. It's the one piece I'm going to read. Um, and uh, I'll just get started on that now. War games. Mike had a complete arsenal in his room. He had all kinds of machine guns, 
grenades, rifles, pistols, and even a bazooka. He had a camouflaged outfit and a beret that allowed him to be the colonel. Mm. Just about all the time. Mm. Whenever we reenacted the previous episode of combat, he brought his stockpile to his front yard. We would select our weapons of choice. Then we would go through the whole battle, just as we had seen it on TV. One night, Mark wanted to be the colonel. Todd was captain. Mark was usually sergeant. I was either a private or a corporal at best when they let me play at all. But that night, Mark wanted to be the colonel. Mike explained all the reasons why Mark couldn't be the colonel. He owned <laughs> the uniform. Oh, oh. It, it wouldn't fit Mark anyway. He owned all the guns. Mm. He was a natural leader of men. Mark said it wasn't fair. Mike called Mark a faggot then punched him in the stomach real hard. Mark crumpled to the ground, crying. I could see the tears roll down his face. Mm. I had never seen Mark cry before. He was tough. He would have made a good colonel. We didn't have the battle that night. As I walked home, I knew I had seen war. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. Wonderful, Edward. Did you, did you have Thank another you. one or was that it? Okay. That was it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here and uh, being part of, uh, yeah, let's there we go, uh, for, for being part of the show today. Um, absolutely. It's, it's a, a wonderful uh, reading already. All right, so we have Bruce E. Whitaker, S.D. Putnam. Uh, Joan Lang is uh, in three. If, he does, if she does not make it, then I'll have Elizabeth Wolf swap with her. Uh, if you're just entering the room and you'd like to read, but you're not um, on the list. Uh, that's imp So we're not... So just so everyone knows, the word is right, tech is not connected to audio, so you can't hear anything from that. Uh, it, it has no audio connected at all whatsoever. I think some of the background noise we were hearing was from um, was from uh, Edward and perhaps someone who was with him physically in his the room with him. That was not a reverb or background noise from anyone else in the room. Uh, but yeah, you won't hear anything from the tech because the tech is not connected to audio. All right, uh, let's see. Coach Josh Smalls, black, uh, Priceless Black in the house, welcome y'all. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, Bruce Whitaker, are you ready, sir? Let me find you and uh, ask you to unmute and let me spotlight you. Hi, welcome. Hello, hello everyone. Marissa, first of all, thank you for putting this fabulous book together. Um, I am, the, my, I don't know why my background is reversed. I've tried several times. Anyway, it's wonderful to be part of this. Uh, I'm going to start with reading my poem in the book. Um, and I hope you understand this is a persona poem. It's called Meditations on the Great Divide. The gunman addresses the third grade class. You have to understand, it's all about optimization. They call it utilitarianism. That's my church. More us less of you, at least right now, though you people are gaining on us. You've got our backs against the wall. See, I don't wanna be here doing this, but I'm a sworn believer, baptized in the water of the greater good. You see the logic? Now or never. Oh, you can shift a bit if those things hurt. You all look so frozen, don't cry. Crying um, gets on my nerves. And in the West, the power rose unto them, fed and swaddled them in feasts of wealth and raiment, the abundance of the promised land offered up to the chosen people, and it was good. That's scripture to give you the bigger picture. I don't want you to be confused. Not knowing is hell, so now you know. 
You are delivered, you could say. I am the instrument of thy peace. Rest in peace. So as you can tell, um, I'm interested in some of the causes and, and larger effects of gun violence. And I want to read a series of sonnets I wrote about my own experience with guns. I grew up in Nebraska. I live in New York now, but I grew up another gun experience. But I lived, I grew up in Nebraska in a hunting culture. It was sort of all American normal until, and that's what this series of sonnets is about. It's called Murder, Mayhem, and Me. And uh, it starts kind of where Edward played with the childhood games. One, if I had known, I might not have played with guns. Chastised at six by Eric's mother, I holstered my pistol. But that night, I bashed Danny's head with a bat to see if he'd conk out like they do on TV westerns. Unfortunately, he stayed conscious and just bawled, leaving the spanking for me. Eric's mother was right. It was my fault. Bad boy. Lesson learned. Childhood is no innocence. Our toys are us. Mayhem ever a turn on. As teens, we could not get enough. We risked our lives parking and petting on lost country roads. After Manson and Strunk, we'd check our car door handles for the hook of the legendary one-handed slasher who preyed on kids doing bad things in cars. Lips parted, hearts hammering, we looked to no avail. Two, lips puckered, hearts hammered, the waters part their veil. A femur washes up on a clay bank. A badly butchered torso, two torsos, soupy heads. A man and a woman, a farm couple, middle-aged, surface in pieces on Harry Strunk Lake, our playground. Two years after the Manson trials, hippies on the highways of the Midlands, the heartland, Nebraska. Fearful huddling, guns sell out, dates are walked to the door, keys found or made, players eat out of town after games, triggers cocked. Travelers get waitress side-eye with their coffee. A naked heart throbs on a gravestone at night. Hippies are seen dancing cultishly in a field. The whole region panics. The liberal coastal mayhem is here. The whole region panics. The liberal coastal mayhem is here. It doesn't matter that the couple were killed trying to extract their daughter from a routine menage a trois, that they were cut up to spare the murderer's bad shoulder. He couldn't haul the bodies out of the basement, that the gravestone heart was the reflection of a tower light, that the dancing hippies were looking for a place to pee, that there's nothing coastal about armed rednecks arguing in a basement. So Nebraska wakes from its progressive era. It had been the first state to ratify the ERA the year before. The mirage of Manson and Harry Strunk and their mayhem closed minds and hunched shoulders into the red state years. The fear huddles would never disassemble. Teenagers kissing in cars were now more brazen than ever. Teenagers kissing in cars were now more brazen than ever. Moving to Lincoln, I sensed mass murder in the air. Down the road a dozen years before, teenagers Charles Starkweather and Caroline Fugate had launched Rampage Murder, killing 11 in random mayhem. I knew people who had known their victims, who recalled how the lights of Lincoln flickered the day in 1959 when Starkweather was electrocuted. It became Nebraska's big story, movies, books, copycats. I met Vince Bugliosi, who'd put Manson away for life when I hosted his Helter Skelter tour on campus. His crystal focus pierced confusion even at cocktails. Manson had learned from Starkweather, play the evil jester in court, use women as puppets, pull the terror cord, keep it random. Pull the terror cord, keep it random. 50 years after Starkweather's first murder, I see the Omaha World Herald's front page commemoration. Three days later, an unbalanced teenager shoots and kills six in the West Roads Mall. Sheer coincidence? Have we ever known what triggers that kind of mind? Distilled the formula of rage, access, and opportunity. Do we bury the red dagger or enshrine it as a warning? So the mayhem of Starkweather, Manson, and their aquilites continues, a national trait. Rampage murder becomes mass shootings. Oh, the blanding of language, the open vein of American life, the great hollowing, 
the unanswered prayers, the answering losses. The unanswered prayers, the answering losses. I had gone to college with one of the West Road Six, my only friend to die in Rampage so far. Grasping to cope, his survivor said he was shopping for a gift en route to a plane, killed helping someone evade the rain of fire, surely, no doubt. Who can really know in that panic speed squeeze? We want to heroize, otherwise why? Here's one thing that happens. Whatever fraternity pranks we shared, his 40 plus years of life lived richly all obliterated by the image of him struck, twisting, spurting, staggering, then striking the gallery floor. Spurting, staggering, then striking the gallery floor. This image inducts me into the legions of survivors, millions by now touched, damaged, destroyed, when I watch the January 6 Capitol riots or militias encircling and menacing state legislators, I see fear huddles embodying their own worst nightmares. When the NRA gives away an AR-15 near Uvalde and someone protests and someone snickers, I hear the screams of the Manson girls on Cielo Drive, the pleas of the young couple before Starkweather's pistol. My friend's smile flashes down the table at dinner. Helter Skelter, Helter Skelter, Helter Skelter, the ram of the ammo, the click, the grip, the aim, the squeeze. If I had known, I might not have played with guns. Thank you very much, everyone, and congratulations on this fabulous book and this, your work on this amazing, terrible cause. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God, that was, oh, that was amazing, Bruce. Uh, Y'all can share your love in the chat. Uh, you can put hearts up on your reactions. Like, yes, please uh, support each other. Thank you so much for being part of this um, incredible book. Uh, my very, one of my favorite posts, SZ Putnam is in the house. Um, SZ uh, was one of our uh, 2022 debut authors and her book we actually nominated for a Pulitzer. Uh, it is a, an insanely excellent book. Uh, so if you have not had a chance to check it out, please do. Uh, SC, are you ready? S, you ready? Hopefully, hopefully she's here. S, I know she's here. Type it in the chat because sometimes I know she's a mama like me. All right, she's ready. Yes. All right. So uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute. I will not be able to spotlight you unless your camera's on, but you don't have to have your camera on. Uh, so just just know that if you're not spotlighted, it, that's that's why. Otherwise, um, I would love to uh, to do that. But yep, take it away. I don't hear you though, if you're talking. Can anyone else hear her or is it just me? Okay, good. I mean, not good, but. You're unmuted. Did you join audio? Uh, okay. All right. So let's, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so Joan is here. Joan Lang is here. So let's have Joan go first. Uh, if Joan is ready and then we can bring us back up. Hopefully she can reconnect, uh, with her audio. Joan, uh, are you, are you here? Are you ready? I see her. You're, you're not here. You're in the car, but Hey, that, that counts. The car counts, uh, for sure. I'm on the road. Yeah, but I'm not driving. So I can definitely read. I, just have to, <laughs> okay. I think I have my poems, Andy, but um, let me see if I can fix my hair. I was at the jazz festival, so um, it was good. Uh, let me see if I can get my poems up. Okay, so um, I have three poems today, and it's uh, good to see everyone. Um, the first poem is the one that uh, you probably heard before. Uh, and then the, the, I have another poem that I just wrote this morning because I just uh, I had a huge... Um, kind of explosion of memory from a my life, my, the trauma that everybody goes through 
who has survived, um, you know, being in, in violence and gun violence, and it's um, it stays with you forever. And here I am, 20 years hence, and it's still with me. And I was shocked by how huge it was, literally like an explosion. So that's the second poem, and then the third one is um, <clears throat> one that I wrote in response to my own poem because I read the poem that um, I had before about the mindset of someone who's who's uh, someone in who's producing the gun violence and how I feel like a lot of the, the drugs that are out there, you know, like I was saying that I really feel that the lobbyists are responsible and the big pharma and the, of course the gun lobbyists and stuff. And they really are, they have no, um, they're ruthless and they don't really care what they do for money. And that the, so many of the drugs, whether they're for, for antidepressant or for just regular things that people are taking um, can cause a mindset that causes someone to want to go do these horrible things. And um, so that's um, the poem that I wrote was about the darkness, but then I wrote another poem in response to it thinking, well, what would it be if there were no guns and if we were able to do the, make a difference like we all wanna do? And so the third poem is about hope. So um, I'll start with the first poem, <laughs> uh, Live Free and Die. Bang, here they come again, assaulting with rifles, taunting our right to live, to give our family food, go to school, pray, get medical care and work in peace. No, those from the gun lobby and companies have paid sums to have video games feature their guns. Not just the visual you see, but the added heightened sense of unreal reality with the vibrating sensation. Bam! Bam, 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 bam. You've hit someone with your gun. Doesn't it feel good? Knock on wood, it's not your neighbor or your daughter or your dad. When some teen turns bad and grabs a gun from an unlocked cabinet or some store down the street and says, look at me while I stroll anywhere you might be and you wipe your friend's blood on your face to stay on earth and not get hurt. I'll rat-a-tat-tat with my machine gun and wipe the floor clean with your tears. I won't ask how you vote. You'll just never go home. And I'll stream it all live on the screen until quite possibly I die. My mind is made up. And my second poem is the one I wrote this morning. And it's for everyone I know who's out there who may have survived gun violence and they're still living with the memory and the feeling in their souls. <clears throat> it's called shrapnel. Shrapnel is everywhere. Shrapnel is in my brain. It's not enough that the machine guns meant for war have come for us here. There's simply no place we can trust to be No way someone could get in here. Guns can come to your door without a warrant. You can be shot by walking down the street to meet a friend. No matter how, day, how the day starts, we have no idea how it will really end. And if shots ring out and there's no time to shout or fight back and lives are literally ripped apart, that's not even the start of it. There is shrapnel in our minds. There is shrapnel in our hearts. There is shrapnel in our souls and in our cells. There is no way to tell how long it will last, how long it will take us to let it go of the hold fast it has on us and the ones left behind, the ones that didn't die. And even the ones who have never been in a room that they may never leave can't see it, but it's everywhere in the fact that we are not safe in our homes, in prayer and hospitals and offices and shops. The news may talk, 
but they don't speak of how we don't even feel safe in our beds. There's no device. There's no life advice that can make it go away. It may dissipate, but it's here to stay. Trauma, fear, lack of change, it rearranges our beings. All we can see is uncertainty. But freedom is within each of us. Together, we can begin again and write a new story. Demand that something must be done. The time is simply up. And then we shall slowly pull out the pieces of shrapnel one by one and start a new day, a new life in the sun. And my last poem is the one I wrote for Hope and it's based on facts. And it's what I hope to see in the future after we all make a difference with our words. It's called Love Letter from 2078. <clears throat> Thank you for the flowers and the way you care about me. Not only today, the world needs to know that in order for me to love you and grow, they had to make gun violence go away. My mother hit her friend, my dad, and shielded him from harm as she lay lifeless on the floor, disguised with blood from another, not as lucky, on her face and chest. I won the state science fair and promoted solar energy across the globe. Children help while inheriting the earth and knowing its worth will steward her back to health. My graduate project created a 3D machine to print houses inexpensively so no one need live outdoors or sleep on cardboard and instead live with dignity. Our wedding gifts were fruitful too. We asked our guests to activate up and remove human rights abuse from the world as we stood safely beneath our wedding hoopah with plenty to eat. And today on our anniversary, we asked our friends and family to make There is no need in this land of plenty for lack like that. Our children have gone on to feel the same. Instead, take action. He planted seed to feed the universe forever. And that is why today on our anniversary, my beloved, I thank you for the flowers you've sown with me along the way. There were no guns to take our lives away. <clears throat> All right, we... I I lost like the last five seconds, but I think you were already done. So hopefully that that is okay, y'all. Thank you so much, John Lang, for being part of this uh, incredible collection of poetry and uh, for being here. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being there, Marissa. Thank you. For oh man, I just I love this collection of human beings that just came together. I Feel like it's just destiny right uh sz putnam there she is uh she is she is here i will go ahead and ask her to unmute uh make sure the room is quiet i do apologize for the um mandatory muting today but um it, it's a tight uh roster of poets today and i don't want anyone to risk being interrupted 
Um, some, if you do hear background noise, it's most likely from the person who's speaking's room because I'm like be, being very diligent of, of the, the mic today. All right, so uh, the rest of the list for those who might be joining late or, or who are turning in on Facebook, we have um, SZ Putnam coming up next, and then we have uh, Angie Williams. Chris Kayla is scheduled to be here, but I don't see her in the room. Diane Murray Ward, Gail Wasserman, Don uh, Krieger, Krieger, dang, Don, I don't remember. Uh, Ike Waltz, Evelyn Hampton is scheduled, but I don't see her here either. Chance on Bird is scheduled, I don't see him here. Then we have Dan Bray, Elizabeth Wolf, I'll here all the way from Scotland. Uh, DG Clearing, Maria uh, Perez, uh, Henry L. Jones, and then Fresh Linen is going to wrap us up today. I do have some folks on standby. standby. I have Karen Scott and Coach Josh Smalls. So should some of those folks who are on the list uh, not be here when it's time for them to read, I'm happy to substitute you. If anyone is in the room who would like to read who is not on the list, uh, would like to be on the standby list, let me know, and I will take care of that for you as well. Thanks, S, for letting me do that little commercial. <laughs> and I will spotlight you. And... Uh, Oh, all right. Hold, please. My, uh, I guess I have to make this full screen, and then I can spotlight her. She's, you're at the bottom of my screen on here, so I can't just. I need to scroll to the spotlighting technology. There we go. Spotlight for everyone. Okay, I'm I'm having difficulties as well with technology today, so it's all good. Um, so happy that uh, I can see all your faces. Um, and a couple of a few of my pieces today that I'm gonna read are just about you know the love of children um, and trying to protect them. Um, this piece is called "Save the Children." We see it coming, but we don't see it coming as the earth becomes overwhelmingly pregnant with lead that no one asked for, shifting the axis off kilter and dumping out all the inhabitants on the wrong side of the hemisphere, like a madman emptying a drawer, or so I wish. The truth is the gravitational pull will force us to stay grounded though we are experiencing vertigo as we fight to keep our bearings. Save the children, I hear them scream, as predators, traffickers, gun violence, starvation, abuse, neglect, take their lives away, some of them. I thought we were saving them when abused adolescent girls were told they no longer had to keep their trauma. Who will protect these children now? And then this next piece, um, I've been I've been working on um, uh, a book of generational trauma um, from from my parents, you know, being in the center of the Vietnam War and then coming here. So this piece is untitled, um, but it's about generational trauma. You inherited a war that was not yours. In the mountains you belonged to, though you didn't belong to the country. Trauma, handed to you like a peace offering Trojan horse. You inherited me. I inherited the trauma. When will they repent for the war, for the fight for power? When are the bones of a people considered enough to fight for peace? And that's that piece. Um, and this last piece that I have is, was written just with my kids in my mind um, and how quickly time is passing by. And so it's just a reminder to love our kids and to teach them kindness right now in a world that is teaching so much fear and so much hate. Um, this piece is called Broken is the Heart. You scoot in close, 
as if trying to meld back into the moment we were almost one, where your dependency on me was all that consumed you and me too. You will never need me like that again. You drift off to sleep, legs entwined around my waist, arms snaked between mine to grasp my shirt, my hair, another hug, another moment when I'm all yours. To imagine your child ripped from your arms forever. Broken is my image of your universe. And the empathy flows in as your heart replaces universe. Broken is the heart. Thank you all so much. Oh, let's go, SC Putnam. Oh my gosh, let's go. Um, so, so glad to see you. I, I miss my poets when I don't see them regularly. Um, you can catch her full set uh, on our YouTube channel, Red or Green Books. You can catch also the book launch for American Graveyard that there, uh, everything that we've done at Red or Green Books is posted up on our YouTube channel. So feel free to go back there, please, and watch Poets. Um, the Word is Right's YouTube channel has the featured sets for so many of you in, who have who have featured at Word is Right over the years. Uh, so definitely go check out our YouTube channel, please. Like, share, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff because that helps us be able to do more things online. All right, Angie Williams is in the house. Uh, Chris Taylor, I, I don't see you here. So if that's the case, we'll sub with Karen Scott. Unless, is Jaw still here? I know Jaw had said something like he was, uh, he needed to uh, um, go. And so let me know, Jaw, if you are wanting to read if Karen is Amy, she's going to be sitting around and wants to take take the next open spot because we are fat, uh, on the list today. And so uh, if Jaw needs to go be dad, then, you know, he could go potentially after Angie. If not, then we'll have Karen Scott go. And then we've got Diane Murray Ward and then Gail Wasserman. So those are the next four. Angie, are you ready? Let me ask you to unmute. Let me spotlight you for everyone. And um, thank you so much about it. Hey, everybody. The first piece I'm doing is called Where's the Hope? I'm only doing two, and it's in our book. We take for granted what is most precious to us. Recognizing it is a must. It is just as dear to us as our lives. Without it, our race will not survive, will not thrive. More precious than our fancy jobs, it should be dear to our heart. Our young men are our prize. No special weight race to save their lives. For every life stolen, one is hidden behind walls. Guns are the thieves. No love, no discipline, no young men. Love thy sons. Keep thy sons. Not just your son. Get rid of the guns. No attention, do detention. No discipline, penal discipline. When will we take the guns away? When will we give love away? When will society stop thinking about the right to bear arms? When will society start thinking about extending arms? The ostrich needs to lift its head or our society is dead. We have misdemeanor love in a felony world. And my last piece is gunplay. I just wrote this one day because, I don't know, I was feeling like it was necessary. It's called gunplay. Gunplay hurts the innocent and causes unnecessary pain and grief, never having any rhyme or reason for pulling the trigger. Love is no longer prominent in society. Now it seems to always be hate, kill. For the years of love thy neighbor, cause thou shalt not kill. We must bring back the love for our fellow man. Without that love, gun violence will not cease. Cause hate-filled people kill loving people. Thanks, everybody. Oh, oh, oh my God, let's go. Yeah, even Karen Scott typed in the chat, Miss 
misdemeanor love in a felony world. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Angetta, for being here today. So, so, so excited to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, Coach Josh Smalls, the Coach Josh Smalls. Like, y'all, he's so popular. I don't want to give him a big head. He's so great that he has to have four names. Like, uh, he, you know, he's 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 the anti one name person. He's so great. He needs four names. Uh, Coach, the Coach Josh Smalls. Are you here? Do you, would you like to read? Are, are we with the program? <laughs> and for those who know uh, Coach, he and I did the cover art for American Graveyard, the literary book. Also, he wrote the foreword for the anthology. Uh, he is a survivor of gun violence, a direct survivor of gun violence. We're very, very glad that he survived and that he's with us today. He's also a member of the Word is Right family and hosts workshops a couple times a month here. So let's see. Ja. Yes, I'm here. Uh, did you hear, oh, wait, let me, um, um, you don't have to share your, or you don't have to take your camera off, but I will not be able to spotlight you, sir. But uh, feel free to take, oh, wait, did you? Ah, there you are. All right, let me spotlight you. There he is. Uh, and come on, come on, computer. All right, there we go. Have at it. Here I go. So um, first of all, thank you all for being here, being a part of this amazing unfortunate thing right um loving the poems i'm hearing so honored to be I, I can't stay all day but i promise i will be here as long as i can i promise you that so um i'm gonna jump in so i can get right out of the way so somebody else can come on up um this piece is called fourth grade the first time was the fourth grade my hands glued themselves to my sides eyes found a way to still themselves I can't remember where my heart went, but it left me. Found its way to someone else's hands, my life photoshopped in the gunman's possessions. The hands of this photographer, my first photo shoot outside. Sun bathing my skin, but autumn in New York City has no warmth. My fear trapped in this window, staring at this nozzle barrel not as friendly as the cartoons my body froze wondering why mom didn't walk with me this day why dad left a solo a marathon in my mindset i'm called names i can't spell waist building up in my pelvis area my knees learn to love themselves my fear my fear found a scream and held it shut Mouth open, but words left for another time zone. The next time it happened, breakfast hadn't found the table. Milk jug in one hand, bullets flying from passenger window, body rolled over, hands covering eyes and ears, someone's voice screaming a prayer I hope to never pray. The next time it happened, I forgot this day. Time refused me an exit. My feet found more pavement than my eyes could grasp. Then the next time, then the next time, then the next time. 18 years found me 20 days after my celebration. One week before Thanksgiving, my hallway became a crime scene. My body became a pin cushion and someone's gun decided I needed a tattoo. A dimple mark my face as territory. Someone decided I had an iron deficiency and lead was the best they could do. You know, no one needs permission when bullets are more accessible than prescriptions. I know it sounds like a movie, but Spielberg himself couldn't write the nightmares I face every day. When depression tries to tell me everyone who says I love you really wish you dead, rattled with everything the Second Amendment allows criminals to hold on to, I know it can't be this way forever. At least that's the lie I, kind of I pray comes true. But it's been 30 years, five bullets, open torso and 33 staples later, here I am the casualty of a war I never signed up for. 
sleep teasing me like a 20 year old wet dream therapy like a band-aid over a gushing river sometimes it helps and other times it just seems to get in the way oh damn <sighs> There were a lot of lines, a lot of lines in that. Um, the chat has a lot, a lot of love. Yeah. Get, get, read the forward. Uh, the jaw, the jaw did. Um, the forward is is amazing. He's amazing. Uh, please follow me. He also has personal books and a bunch of other things. All right. Thank you, Jaw. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. Uh, next up, we have the one and only Diane Murray Ward, my Tesoro sister in arms, is here. Uh, Gail Wasserman, Don Krieger, and then Ike Waltz. Those are the next four um, on the list. Uh, Evelyn Hampton would then be fifth. I don't see her in the room. If she is not here, Karen Scott, that is all you. Uh, just so you have an idea of, of when the next uh, opening uh, will be. Let me find Ms. Diane Murray Ward. Let me ask her to unmute and spotlight her beautiful face for all of us. And um, there. Thank you very much. Yes, it is unfortunate that you had to put this anthology together. And Ja, I am so grateful that you are here. I'm going to read one piece, the piece that I have in the anthology. Thank you again, Marissa. The title is Shivers. I am confined. I feel prejudiced against. I feel used. I feel mislabeled. I am mortified. I feel as if I haven't a voice or a say in some of the actions I am forced to perpetrate. There are those like me that look like me who feel misjudged. Our voices, our thoughts, with spokespersons who never asked us our opinion or side of these issues. Why? Because we are only a tool, an object, color hardened by design. You'll use me and I'll cry. You'll die and I won't cry. Well, maybe, selfishly. I am despised, propelled against my will. My target, I hear. Sigh. I cannot deny how much pain and suffering I inflict. I am sickened that I even exist. I can only move when attended. I rely upon others for everything I do. My grooming, where I go, who I interface with, my actions are scripted. I have supportive advocates. I am revered and worshipped. I am international. I had humble beginnings, as with most of our shared histories. I can be whored for trouble and pretend I'm for peace. Sometimes I amuse myself into believing that I keep harmony and provide an equal footing through the violence I am capable of inflicting as a last resort. In full disclosure, however, sometimes I'm the inciter, initiator, the taunter, the eliciter, the dara, the causer, the promoter. Humbled by your need for me, as I stated, I can only move when attended. I never act alone. 
I rely upon others for every move I make. I am channeled into a tunnel whose daylight, night light, starts with a click, staggers into a whistling breeze, then dulls upon impact. An impact I never know ahead of time slowing me down. An impact I did not choose. An impact I supplemented without choice because I have no say in my use. I conform without a will of my own. To some, I am attractive in my sleek design. Upgrades ability to devastate you. My presence is unforgettable. I leave marks, leave all cabinet spaces. I am not heroic silver. However, as every bullet knows, we cause shivers. DMW. Thank you. Oh, wow. I know Steve Jason calls you Lady Diane. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Diane Ward, for uh, here and for your contribution. All right. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. Welcome, AJ Houston, DG Clearing, and Finn Hall is in the house all the way from Scotland. Uh, so, so excited. Thank you all for being here. All right. Next up, we have Gail Wasserman followed by Don Krieger. Hey, Don, you'll have to tell me if it's how Krieger, 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 so that I can I'll figure it out. I will it right, it's important. The little things count, the names matter. And then Ike Waltz, you'll be in three. I do not see Evelyn Hampton in the room. Evelyn, if you're here, please let me know. If not, Karen Scott, that uh, slide belong uh, to you and Gail there she is hi oh there she is I'm like there's her beautiful face and let me go ahead and spotlight you and hi everyone I'm from California and I am honored to be in the American graveyard thank you so much I haven't written anything in the chat because everyone is so wonder the works are so good my hands would be <laughs> exhausted so um there's no one that i i've heard that i don't think is phenomenal anyway i am greatly honored to read with all of you and this is i have three on gun violence and this was the one that was published in the american graveyard okay just like in 1882 yes it happened then to oh i'm sorry declare a no gun zone just like in 1882 Yes, it happened then, too, in the wild, wild west, innocent folks getting shot to death. Sisters and brothers, we must help one another, one city, one town at a time, declare a no-gun zone like Wyatt Earp did in Tombstone. See, all out there, hell-bent on right to bear arms in the Second Amendment, need to remember the forefathers' intent was to form an army against the British militants. Sisters and brothers, we must help one another. One city, one town at a time, declare a no-gun zone like Wyatt Earp did in Tombstone. Now the redcoats are not going to come, so put down your gun. Sisters and brothers, we must help one another. One city, one town at a time, declare a no-gun zone like Wyatt Earp did in Tombstone. One city, one town at a time, declare a no-gun zone like Wyatt Earp did in Tombstone. And this one was published in the um, Phoenicia Herald, a local um, local newspaper. And the sad thing about this is, that I actually it was published recently, but I actually wrote it in 2015. So it goes to show you how long gun violence is. This was about the shooting in the community college, and it's called "Bang Bang Boom, I'm Doomed." Bang, bang, boom, I'm doomed. He just shot the professor in the head, I'm dead. Oh my God, oh my God, there's nowhere to run. I'm done. Oh my God, oh my God, he's asking students their faith as if he's a member of the human race. She said she's a Christian and he shot her in the face. Bang, bang, boom. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I don't want 
my life to end. Save me, save my friend. We're just young students. And the last one I wrote is a song. It later became a song with uh, my collab, Liz, Liz Yacobian. But these are the uh, original lyrics. Our sweet Billy boy. Every night heard him scream playing on his video machine. But tonight before midnight, off went our porch light while Billy, the boy next door, robbed the convenience store. Our neighbor, sweet Billy boy, took his brand new toy, a real fully loaded gun looking for some video fun. What an awful shame Billy played those games and spent so much time learning to commit a crime. Then the very next day, Billy stopped above the freeway and shot the random man driving the gray passenger van, just like the world famous actor Billy saw on screen the day before. Oh no, our sweet Billy boy took his brand new toy, a real fully loaded gun looking for some movie fun, a shame Hollywood loves killing and so much of its filming. Yes, our 14 year old neighbor, the teenager next door is not with us anymore. I sweet Billy boy took his brand new toy, a real fully loaded gun looking for some real fun. Now Billy's no longer around. He dropped to the ground, saw the man in the van was dead. So Billy shot himself in the head. Shame Billy boy's no longer around. He dropped straight to the ground. All right. Thank you. Was that it? That's it. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I just I don't like to interrupt it until I'm like sure. I'm sure. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Gail Wasserman, uh, for being here and 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 reading and being part of this incredible anthology. And I feel the same frustration, right? Um, I will never forget being at the post office mailing out boxes of author copies. And I look at my phone, I kid you not. Uh, this is probably a, a probably something I will always tell this account. I looked at my phone and I had an alert on my news app and it had uh, notified me of the shooting in Nashville as I'm mailing out author copies of American Graveyard. And so, you know, that's why I opened with my Nashville poem today. And this is why we put volume one on the cover, because we know that this is a marathon. This is a war. Uh, this is a, absolutely a worldwide uh, problem, a humanitarian problem. This is not a local problem. This is, is an everyone problem. And I think we laid down the foundation to be able to build something on this that we can really affect change. Um, so that is our hope. And I thank all of you for being brave enough to be part of this. So thank you. All right, let's keep going. Um, Don, I got you up next. Um, where's Don? Uh, and then, let's see, uh, Don, where'd you go? Don, I don't see you. Is he, did he leave the room? Did he have to go? Maybe he'll be back. Uh, I don't see him. Maybe he had to go and maybe he'll be back. All right, well, he was here, uh, so maybe he, he will be back. And let me go ahead and mute everyone. That means Karen Scott, you get to come up before you thought you're ready. But I know you're ready. This woman's always ready. All right, so Dawn, if you wind up coming back, I'll squeeze you in uh, for sure uh, the next place um, that I can. And then after Karen, uh, we have Ike. Uh, Evelyn, I don't see Evelyn Hampton here. So if there's someone who would like to take her place, I see AJ Houston is in the house. AJ is the very first uh, contributor in American Graveyard. So AJ, you want to read in Evelyn's spot so she is unable to be here today. I'm I'm happy to give you her spot. So just let me know. And then Chance On, you will be in four. Let me go ahead and spotlight Miss Karen Scott. And... Uh, 
All right. Well, yeah, that was that was said, but you're right. I am prepared. Um, the first poem I'm going to read is an old one of, that I had written um, for. Oh, wow. Okay, it's about two years old. Um, I don't know about your cities, but Columbus, Ohio has become the wild, wild west. I mean, our news accounts are filled with um, like three shootings an hour, like in rapid succession in various parts of the city. And we just celebrated our 100th murder for this year. So um, anyway, this poem is called So Close. In the Cover Me Up video, a woman moves behind her lover, a veteran, as he stands shirtless at the kitchen sink. Her fingertips brush the jagged scar, the torn patch of flesh so clearly the healed over disruption of skin created by a sniper's bullet, an explosion in their lives. She gazes at the destruction, a look that says, I came this close to losing him. The same thought had me in tears in Baltimore when my husband Thomas arrived home later than expected. He held me, soothed me, told me softly that I was right to be alarmed. My fear was not irrational. Homicide is the number one killer of men in my age group. This was before racists felt more free to vent their hatred unleash their violence, a turn down the wrong street, a look, a move in the wrong direction. Before cops committed homicide with impunity, a traffic stop, a door breached at the wrong house. How many wives, lovers, mothers have looked upon their husbands, partners, and sons with the same thought, I came this close to losing him. Meeting friends in a parking lot after work, a convenience store at the wrong moment, waiting to cross the street. He's safe at home now, but every day I come this close. And my, um, and I love being in this, in this anthology, not so much the reason that, that Marissa had to put together this anthology, but I'm honored to be in it. And I'm going to read you um, my poem that's in here. Um, it's a response poem to the shooting in Evolve. Is it still called a cento if some of the lines are your own? He was a good big brother, a natural leader, an eager learner. She was on the honor roll. They were athletes, a softball all-star, soccer players, swimmers, she was a sweet, smart, shy tomboy, a good friend. She loved her cat. She was a planner, already planning her quinceanera. She had just received her first communion. He stole them away from us. She wanted to be a cheerleader. She wanted to be a lawyer. She was going to be a marine biologist. He wanted to be a police officer to protect other people. She wanted to be a veterinarian. She loved to draw. She wanted to be an art teacher. She was practicing photography. She wanted to visit Australia. He stole their futures, their possibilities. She had been married 24 years to her high school sweetheart. He died of a broken heart two days later. They called it a heart attack. He brewed his grandparents a cup, a pot of coffee every morning. She called her daughter every day at 4.30 as she left the school. Her daughter posted, I don't know how to do this life without you, but I will take care of dad. I will take care of our dogs and I will forever say your name. She tried to call 911. Instead of taking or destroying her phone, the murderer shot her. Her favorite color was blue, especially on butterflies. She enjoyed fishing with her dad. Her father drove her to school each day. She didn't wanna to go to school that day. 
as if she knew something bad was going to happen. Her favorite color, the same as mine, green. She enjoyed reading on the couch like me. I can't fathom having to identify my child by DNA. In a state that was already disrupted, it has disrupted so many children's lives, politicians at microphones say, our hearts go out to the parents. The crowds chant, do something, do something, please do something. The only thing that happens is more killing. She dreamed of going to art school in Paris. Thank you. Oh, let's go, Karen Scott. Oh, yes. Um, I feel all of your emotions on this, right? It is an incredible showing of, of literary and artwork, these anthologies, and, and the content is just amazing. And yet there's this underlying undertow, this current of, of grief. Um, it's 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 like a heavy uh, having to do the right thing, but it's just really heavy. Um, so it is a double-edged sword in that sense because I'm very excited and very happy and very proud of this book, but I'm really really sad and and grief stricken at everything that's inside of it. So I thank you for being here, and I'm really glad we got to get you on the on the mic. So thank you so much for for being here. All right, Don Krager is in the house. Uh, very, very excited. Uh, he's here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Ike come on now, and then we'll have Don because um, he he just missed the reading. We're moving a little fast, uh, faster than uh, just ten minutes, Don. So that's okay. Um, but uh, we got you. Don't worry. There's plenty of room here. So we're going to have Ike and then Don. And then um, AJ Houston will take Evelyn Hampton's slot since she is not, uh, since she is not here. So uh, are you ready? I, and I just love this man, by the way, because um, he, he wrote this poem that inspired me so much that, that I actually, my opening line of the poem was, I Waltz said, war is a human disease, right? And then I submitted that poem to the uh, Sunflowers Anthology to um, help the people of Ukraine. And so Ike, Ike's name is in my poem that is now in a Ukrainian anthology. Uh, so this goes to show the community and how knit and interwoven we are. Uh, so feel free to take the works of your fellow peers and write to that if it inspires you. So thank you Ike so much for that uh, incredible line. And I will go ahead and spot let you and okay west side south side but beautiful maria the most beautiful name i ever heard maria 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 all the radiant sounds captured in a single word. Maria, 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 we live, lift kisses and love. Your name and I had so incredibly much. Maria, I've just bought a lovely gun, irresistibly glistening in the bright sun. Such power in my brain, the most satisfying feel I ever had. I've just bought this brave gun, a lovely, lovingly baptized Maria, my freedom gun. And then in a brutal bang, that beautiful darling name will never feel the same again. Maria, Maria, you just killed a man. My shining gun, I lovingly grazed Maria. And suddenly I found how horrific a sound can be. Good morning, my lover, I yearned to say. Good night, Maria, my beautiful protective gun, let's pray. And then when I finally woke, 
the preacher told that my Maria, my Maria, in a piercing bang, pulled the trigger and had killed my own son. I buried my son alone inside my broken heart. I punished Maria, my glistening gun, to the same nightmare that echoes my scream. Maria, 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 that repeated noise, bang, 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 as loud, as fast, only a bullet can. Maria, what have you, what have I, what have we, none? Maria, 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 the most horrific sound, day and night, commenting fear, repeating in my burning ear, when your name comes up, Ah, or near, I shudder in fear. I will forever dog my dream. I will forever hear Maria with my soul, my heart, my son, my eventual suicide. With that deadly glistening in the sun, must I bang? Maria, I weep. Maria, what a cruel. Every day, bang, bang. Thank you. Oh, I did you want to do another one? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Ike Waltz, everyone. Oh, I know. Mighty Perez is like, oh, um, yes. Thank you so much for for the reading. All right, uh, Don Krieger, are you ready, sir? Let's see if he's if he's ready. I know he just got here, uh, but yeah, let's let's see. Let me go ahead and unmute you, sir, and spotlight you. And and after. You got cut off there, but I'm just going to go ahead. <clears throat> On Valentine's Day 2018, an intruder murdered 17 and injured 17 more at Stoneham Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. A year later, Sidney Aiello and a second unnamed Parkland survivor and Jeremy Richmond, the father of a child murdered in 2012 at Sandy Hook Elementary, all committed suicide in the same week. Memorial Day. 2019. 90 miles upriver from Washington, the flag at the Blue Goose Market flew for a year at half mast. Was a child of Maryland killed last year at Parkland? And why was it that since those survivors' suicides this March, as I passed by on the highway, roof open to the sun and spring air, the flagpole was empty, but no, none of that makes sense. For though 20 of our warriors killed themselves this month, a new flag flew on Memorial Day, so huge that at half mast, it would touch the ground. October 27, 2018, Shabbos morning, someone opened fire at the Tree of Life Synagogue. Three days later, the first of the murdered were buried. One was husband to my coworker and friend. Unveiling. 11 lives taken at the Tree of Life. Hours later and miles away, our writing workshop canceled, our chance for defiance, however small, gone. I waited at the funeral with hundreds to pass security, newsboys on the street asking with their cameras who was afraid. I watched her halting walk to his grave, reluctant like a child. I followed like a child with a shovel full of earth to cover him. I listened to the learned seeking meaning, hundreds crowded, 
into the Beth Shalom basement, police in armor at the entrance. When the doors locked behind us, I noticed the dampness and a draft on my bare neck. Today was 11 months, hundreds standing witness in the warmth beneath the trees. I still live, so I was there. I wonder though, would we have canceled our workshop for a drive-by at a playground? Lot's wife died nameless for being unmale. A young white man killed eight last week to save himself from temptation. Seven were women, Hyun Jung Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Yong Ai Yue, Zhao Ji Tan, Sun Chung Park, Dao Yu Feng, Delena Ashley Yon, and Paul Andre Michel. No one was there. We shopped today at the Pious Bookshop, bought Seder plates for the kids, packed in a clean pizza box with secondhand bubble wrap. Passover is this weekend. They had coffee mugs and fridge magnets, skull caps with slogans. We are stronger together and no place for hate. As if it was this morning, I remembered passing security for the funeral, the line blocks long down Darlington Road. 11 unorthodox killed at the Tree of Life. I longed for the others, the pious, to be with us together down Darlington Road and at the cemetery later, their beards, black coats, and sits it. But no one was there. As if you're not Orthodox, you're not a Jew. As if it matters that the murdered are. This one is written in two, two voices. I'm going to snap my fingers when I switch from one to the other because you can't see it on the page. Not my nightmare. I saw the pawnbroker in college, a family picnic in a spotless German wood, the growl and squeal of engines and brakes, soldiers climbing from the trucks, the father led in chains through a warehouse. Another father dragged from the table tortured and set to work in a Baghdad prison. Another cop, the wrong door. Another black teenager shot dead. A glimpse of his nude wife on a gurney, men pointing and haggling. The sun on another, men pointing and haggling. The daughters calling out and screaming. Another daughter sold for breeding, another wife in a fine house. I have lived that in a dream since, and since I was a child. The same trucks at the same curb, the same growls and the same screams. I have always feared that even here in America, the trucks will come someday for me. But that's not my nightmare. Another news flash, flak jackets and rifles, another sick certainty, pure men of faith. I never noticed that anywhere in the world, if you're not white, they come any day. You're not male, it's every day. And last, this one was in the book, Sunday Drive. I only need to show my face at work sometimes. Most of what I do is online. Since the COVID though, 
it's that way for almost everyone. We ping pong every other week, her place or mine, four hours each way in my sealed car at 80, like a transport pod in Musk's hyperloop, but we have windows. Truck packs race in slow motion, shredded treads, bright fog, roadkill, tunnel mouth, cops under every overpass, glaring like the dazzling sun. Once we stopped in Breezewood for crackers, the manager was terrified. He checked each of us at the door for a mask and for any hint that we had come for his head. Just this Friday, my office computer went down. I'm not essential, so I'd called someone who was to push the reset button. The grandbaby was born on Friday, too. We drove up first thing, Saturday, watched little Becky while dad helped mom in the hospital, then drove back four hours each way. Broken trees laid flat cell towers and billboards, Jesus saves, fresh cracked eggs, hog barns, silos, keep America great. When will we reap the whirlwind? We're hoping mom and baby come home today and we're waiting two weeks to see if we got the COVID or they did. Driving back, South Jersey was empty and dark as a closet. Some fool sat in, my, in the blind spot on my bumper for half an hour. We were frightened and enough is enough. I slowed to get his tag number, not so easy since he slowed too. Flags on every porch, church buses on cruise control, chain reaction pile up. Are you confused? Trust Jesus, 1-800-FOR-TRUTH. I turned on the dome light and dialed 911 as we passed him. He bore off on an exit just then. Maybe the cops got him, maybe not. I wonder if he had a pistol and what would have happened had I. Let's go, Don. It does kind of yield to the wild, wild west. Um, it, we do ask ourselves, what would it be like, right? Um, thank you so much. And, and speaking on the synagogue shootings, thank you for doing that as well, because uh, it is epically important that we continue the talk and, and the advocacy around anti-Semitism and gun violence uh, and continue fighting for our friends uh, and neighbors in, uh, who are battling that as well. All right, we're gonna keep going. Oh, oh my God. It's, it's, it's like a movie in my mind when you read. So thank you uh, for that. All right, uh, next up we have AJ Houston who is here and um, followed by Chance on Bird and Dan Brady. Uh, hopefully Dan is back. I know Dan had to go uh, take care of something. He said he'd be back. Okay, good. Dan is back. So we have AJ, Chance on, Dan Brady, and then the Magus, Gustav Salas, you are on here, Elizabeth Wolf, Finn Hall, DG Clearing, Maria Del Rosario Perez, Henry L. Jones, and Fresh Linen. Uh, to wrap us up tonight, uh, everyone is here. So if you are in the room, if you're in the anthology, either the art book or the literary book and you would like to read, let me know, please. Uh, we are ahead of schedule by about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So if you would like to read and you didn't make it onto the list, let me know and uh, we, we can do that for you uh, today. Uh, where there, there he is, AJ Houston, my co-host with the most. Uh, looks like you're in the jungle, sir. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, and then chance on you're on deck. It, it's a it's a garden. It's not a jungle. It's a garden. It's a water garden. I thought it would be calm. Tomatoes. I, I, tomatoes. No tomatoes. No tomatoes. 
I just can't please you, Melissa. I can't, I can't please you. I don't know what's up. You're here. That's so much pleasure. It's fine. Don't worry. But you're in the jungle. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll, I'll change that. Uh, okay. Uh, I really appreciate Bandit's anthology. And, and my poem is the first in the anthology. She says it's because my first name begins with A. But I beg to differ, but we're not going to argue that at this point. I'm just going to read the poem that's in the book. The poem, the title of the poem is A Bullet Named George. I imagined Derek took a moment, lined up his bullets every night in plantation-like formation, two by twos, single file, maybe row after row, resembling, resembling a cotton field. Took the time to line up shells on the kitchen table right before the family gathered for dinner said the Klansman's prayer, the same one they used before a general arrived in Texas, the same one Southern gentleman said right after President Hayes agreed unofficially to remove all the soldiers from the South, the ones holding the fate of reconstruction on the barrels of their muskets, the same sacred chants held in reverence while keeping their hands warm on front lines of victims as crosses glowed usually around midnight. There are puddles of blood on certain streets and certain hoods where drivers and cruisers slow down in remembrance of the good old times, craving again the impact of executions without recourse. Of days long past, I imagine Officer Chauvin gave a name to each shell he carried with him daily. Names more than likely in chronological order, first one resting ready in the chamber, fighting back the anxiety of giving the honor of being the next in line as men with darker complexions. We would know the bullet is for you or I, especially when it echoes your name as it enters your body without invitation. I haven't Googled or gathered the numbers yet. I'm almost positive at least 49 states are in a race with reward to the winner who can stack the most black bodies by years in. Chauvin must have known of boxing legends, Foreman's affinity for George's. Five of his 12 male children are named George. On May 25th, 2020, Maybe he wanted to save a bullet. Maybe the first George in the chamber was stuck on the ready set, too many witnesses for go. He had previous associations with the man, knew his name was George without asking. Held him at knee, I mean, I mean, at rear tire's edge. I mean, concrete doesn't move. How many minutes does it take to read Miranda? Can't say. Can't say since the Supreme Court gave the stamp of approval to races, it is no longer required. How loud can any black man yell 100 and with 140 gears of hate? I mean, roasted, I mean, 140 pounds of protect and abuse on his neck. It is estimated by the coroner. More than half of the attacking officer's weight, approximately 91.5 pounds, was directed to the cap of his knee. When did concrete become an unwilling accomplice? What if I can't breathe, cannot be forced from a constricted larynx? Cannot be coerced into existence when air has immediately become unavailable? What if because chokeholds are thought to be against the law, hate decided a knee? A knee has not been added to the list as a weapon. Maybe he wanted to save a bullet. Not all fingers can go immediately after ready set has been motioned. Sometimes the watches will make more noise than racist is used to. Can't focus on killing a black man with white people looking while cell phones are going live, TikToking to millions, streaming on YouTube, black twittering your conscience into tears. I bet. I bet if relatives had heaven's approval, they would have smitten him down in biblical fashion. God done burnt down cities, turned men and women to stone, flooded places for lust. Is it okay to smoke a motherfucker if he sees fit? Even the devil ain't satisfied when the culprit is only sentenced to 21 and a half years. Shouldn't right and wrong, shouldn't justice, shouldn't the conscience of America be tired of apologizing? Ashamed of police consistently paying billions for actions detrimental to society's mental acuity. Shouldn't the charges, shouldn't the charge for murdering an unarmed black man, killing an unarmed person, not with the skin, the color of America, find its equivalency in pain? Ain't justice, ain't justice got a brother or sister somewhere we ain't met yet that can demand, command him to cease and desist? America didn't know, but he released a plague of police years ago right after black bodies start chasing some free. Called them bounty hunters. Claimed it only right 
in America to recapture melanin and repurpose labor. Cotton ain't never been able to pick itself. What if this time? What if this time his only goal was to save a bullet? To not go after ready set has met the specifications of agreement. How much hate, how much prejudice must you caress in the clutches of your bones have flown through the cavities of your heart for nine minutes and 29 seconds to pass without notice? Maybe he just wanted to save a bullet. I do not know if the George sitting anxious in the chamber finally gathered enough courage to say no. What if bullets had a choice, could change directions, could return to sender at the same velocity it left? If I bet the plague of police released in our communities would have second thoughts before re removing their revolvers. I bet bullets would choose us over them. The messages in the wind exclaiming the greatness of melanin, teaching how it was in black, becoming Blackest of the black that made white, somebody of notable consequence must tell America unarmed black bodies are not weapons. Should have some value after cotton. Streets should never be a resting place for black blood. Concrete cannot willingly convert pounds of aggression into pipes of plasma. Cannot measure the excretion of melanated life juices without aid or medical assistance. After all we built, given, after all the blood, sweat, and bone sacrifice, shouldn't it finally be enough we survived? Some want to call it black man tragic or black girl magic. Can't you see God was on a mission for grace? We could have converted America to red, black, and green years ago if we wanted to. Had we thought of Invictus? God has given America a reprieve. You would know because as of yet, we're not angered to retaliation. Shouldn't it be enough? We can still breathe. Can't America be satisfied? We are still here. <sighs> and that is how you open American Great Falls Good Violence. Uh, very, very first book. First book. First poem in the book. Um, yeah. AJ Houston, uh, AJ leaves, leads a wonderful program, 707 Pacific, every, every day on Instagram. AJ Word Art is his handle. Go follow him. Like every day he's got something going on and it's remarkable. So thank you so, so much. Um, AJ, Ja, Mr. Witz. Um, but I used to have a co host. I used to, to have a co host on the show, though. I usually have a co-host on the show. You usually, I, what? I, I'm I'm a little busy, but and school's <laughs> back in session now, which is harder, right? But tomorrow, I, I know, I'll, but I'll I wanted, I wanted, them, I wanted that to be known. I wanted that to be known also. <laughs> I can come bug you if you want tomorrow uh, for a little while. Um, yes, it's so much fun. We we have the best time. If you're into shenanigans, history lessons. A little bit of um, a little bit of naughtiness, but mostly just like um, poetry. It's a wonderful, wonderful be, be, show. Be, before, <laughs> be, before before I go, Prada, I I have a question. You never, I, I, we never talked after the Monday night event. Okay. So I never heard your opinion of the Monday night event. I didn't know you wanted my opinion of the Monday night event. Yes, I do. I, I do. That's the only, only reason I did it because you asked. So I, I just wanted your opinion. Oh, okay. Well, I'll come bug you in the morning and I'll give you my opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And thank you, man. I think I think the book is awesome. I think the book is awesome, and I, I I really I'm really honored that I'm included in the book, and I'm I'm quite sure everybody in the book is so so honored, and we got to get one to every senator for sure. You know, it's only what ten thousand. I think it's ten thousand seven hundred and fifty hours before November fifth, twenty twenty four. So we need to get them a book before we vote again because some of them are gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then we can start all over and cycle yeah. through. <laughs> uh, all of the U.S. senators that are sold out, I will reset. I'll reset the inventory to zero to two and people can, yeah. So we'll, we'll keep doing that. The sponsor center program is just so massive. And uh, once all the senators have books, we'll work on the Congress people. So uh, definitely uh, got, got to do that. We, just being part of the solution. Uh, and that's, you know, a lot of people were 
wondering like what do i do i'm just one person how can i help what do i do and it's a helpless feeling when you don't know the answer to that and so i think by providing this book um it gave a lot of people um an opportunity to be yeah. part of something and by doing sponsor a senator it gives others an opportunity to be part of, of the progress of what we're trying to do. Uh, so like I said before, you know, we have a, a, a community outreach committee. We are part of Maria Perez is in the room. She's one of the chair people for that. And uh, we're, we're really working hard on trying to become part of different organizations and work with other platforms and other organizations around gun violence uh, so we can continue to support uh, and band together uh, to show force so uh, we're not stopping and fear <laughs> fear is not in my nature so <laughs> let's go uh, we're gonna keep rocking and, 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 and rolling we, and we do not do doubt yeah no uh i have uh, there's a there's a line in one of my latest poems that says I have no weakness for weakness. Uh, so absolutely, that is true. And so thank you so much, AJ, for rolling through. Um, AJ thank will you. be here at the New Mexico Poetry Summit in September, along with so many amazing poets, dozens and dozens. When I say dozens, it's plural with an S. Dozens of people are flying into New Mexico for the summit. So get your ass here uh, if you can. Uh, bike, walk. Uh, drive, bus, train, don't hitchhike. We don't, uh, we do not condone hitchhiking. Uh, but yeah, catch a, catch, catch a way to get here, please. All right. So thank you, AJ. Next up, we have Chance on Bird. Uh, uh, Chance on is also part of our Word is Right family. We absolutely love Chance on. Dan Brady, you are after Chance on. The Magus, Gustav, Solace, you are in three. And uh, the rest of the list is Elizabeth S. Wolf, Finn Hall, DG Clearing Media, Del P uh, Rosario Perez, Henry L. Jones, and Fresh Lennon coming all the way from Europe uh, overseas serving in our military. Thank you for your service. He will wrap us up tonight. If anyone is in the room who is not on the list who would like to read, let me know. Uh, and I will get you uh, get you on. Where is Chance on? There he is. I don't know why I can't ever find you, sir. Uh, it's not like... <laughs> It's, it's not like I haven't had you uh, on my screen for years and years already, but let's go. Let me spotlight your beautiful face. I'm Did you freeze? Oh, wait, wait, start over, start over, because you froze. Okay, um, perpetual blackness. I'm black every day. I can't remove it. I can't scrub it off. I can't dream it away. There are no potions to reduce it. I'm black every day, a criminal by default. The target was placed on my back while I blossomed in my mother's womb and grew when I began to read, think, and become socially conscious. I'm black every day, nervous around white law enforcement. because they can become trigger happy instant. I even get, get anxious when people hold up their phones simultaneously because I feel like a fight is on the horizon. I'm black every day. I hope it will be normalized and held as sacred people in the eyes of America. We are hard to be in the show. I'm black every day. It's a beautiful thing to be a golden array of soul, the premier people of the earth. All people come from us. No one wants to cat a copycat. Everybody likes an original. Haku. Praying for the world, vitriol and violence, internal cancer. Praying for the world, vitriol and violence, Is he freezing for everyone else or is it just me? All right. Ch wait, chance on we vitriol and violence. That's the last thing I heard. Um, so 
um, if if you would you okay we can also turn off the camera and just have you uh, Karen I got you right <laughs> I'm ESP and Karen Scott uh, uh, if you want to turn off your camera you can and just do your audio and I don't mean to call you out but he spotlighted the only person I have in my little corner is you uh, and I feel like okay good I'm I'm on the right track I'm not screwing this up because I think maybe it's me all the time and I'm screwing it up but apparently I think there is a static enet chance on so um go ahead can you can you say something let's hear if it's better hello <laughs> I, I love it all right well i would say start all the way over start from the beginning and read that whole thing through again please uh because okay. we don't want to miss any of it and it totally deserves all of yeah go ahead okay um you, the poem that I read in the book? Which, whichever you're reading, you were just reading, start from the beginning and reread that. Okay. Praying for the world, vitriol and violence, internal cancer. Praying for the world, vitriol and violence, internal cancer. Massa's whip still cuts, but cuts with bullets this time through black on black crime. Massa's whip still cuts, but cuts with bullets this time through black on black crime. Poets are prophets, speak to America's soul so she may be saved. Poets are prophets, speak to America's soul so she may be saved. And the last haiku, God damn mass shootings. Bullets fall like rainfall and no one gets away. God damn mass shootings. Bullets fall like rainfall and no one gets away. Thank you. Oh my God, let's go. Um... I'm really glad that we started over and you, yeah. I, I'm not glad your camera was off because we like to see your face, but I, uh, it definitely helped your audio come in uh, much better. So I'm really glad Chance On, thank you so much for that. For those who don't know, Chance On is uh, working to break the uh, Guinness Book World Records for most haiku, uh, it's just over 10,000. And he also hosts a haiku writing workshop the second and fourth uh, Sunday here at the Word is Right. All right, let's keep going. Uh, we got Dan Brady is in the house. Welcome, Dan. The Magus Gustav Salas will be in. Uh, will be after Dan and Elizabeth S. Wolf. You will be in three. Let me find Dan Brady right here. Let me ask you to unmute, sir, and spotlight you. And so, are are we still at the ten minute thing? Just thought I'd make sure I know what I'm doing. I don't want to goof anybody up. Yes, uh, you, you're welcome to take up to 10 minutes. If you wow. go over a minute or so, that's fine, as long as it's not a super long monologue. We're running a little early on time to today, so feel free, take your time. Okay, I just wanted to point out what I put into the chat. There's two things, A and B. One is um, about Sacred Grounds, the, the weekly venue I host on Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. in Pacific time. And we welcome anybody who hears this to come on by, check it out and see what we're doing. Uh, blast us with everything you have because we're getting kind of complacent in there a little bit. So we need to be have our bones shaken. The second thing B is the global open mic. It's an attempt to find any open mic that live streams anywhere and put it in a place where people can find it. You can check out the links there. So uh, I got three pieces that should come in under the wire as I like to say. Um, this one is an advisement to everybody because if you're not alive, you can't really do much in the world. And if you don't know who influences you, again, you might be, you know, needing this information. So this is a poem originally uh, was, I was responding to someone asked me who influenced me. And um, this poem came out and I want to thank Chanson for, for being here and reading. Haiku is, uh, is great. I don't have any of those today, but he is no, he knows what he's doing. So just shout out to him and thank you, Marissa, for everything you're doing here. I mean, just like, hello. All right. 
<laughs> okay, so upon being asked who influenced you, how and when does a story begin? How are we to know? When I think on it, any tale, no matter its size, must begin long ago. So when asked who influenced me, I gave my friend an analogy. Consider a stream, I said, even a small one near to hand. Is not its course ever uh, guided by the contours of the land? Is it not deflected by every rock, bit of soil, or living thing with which it coexists before or after the stony lip of its spring? And are not all these things but a postscript proceeding from a source which charges the nature of the stream and so affects its discourse? Nor should I fail to say that forests and men alike surely do amend it, for its worth is clear to temporal beings who can apprehend it. But the fishes and all the living things cannot be the stream, nor for that matter can it be the water, or so it would seem, for that flow is ever carried off, even as we watch, for sport, whether by evaporation or gravity's simple transport. But surely it's not the path or the things it has carried off, nor could it be its remains, a shallow drying trough. A stream, then, is a time and place dependent upon conditions which, if the truth be told, have utmost antiquity as its origins, preconditions which, if they be scientifically analyzed with all, stretch back to the beginnings of time and matter immemorial. And perforce, do they not, I began to worry, extend to onward in time until the very edge of doom itself, Imagine, stream, sublime. And so full circle I came as my analogy found its end. What are the credits I must roll to answer my friend? No less than everyone who has ever been or may yet be. Nothing less than that full chorus has clearly influenced me. Okay? You know, we all have roots and they all go back. Respect. Give everybody respect. And uh, speaking of respect, this is, I think this, this is the piece I have in the collection, and it's titled Only in America. And this was written in response to one of the many school shootings, which was followed up by a set of high school kids organizing and getting political. So anyway, uh, this is from uh, 2018, February-ish. Only in America. Do teachers discuss becoming a human shield, learn to take bullets meant for their students, or schedule practice with their new free gun? Some of the latest perks of their profession. Only in America do we have ma mass murderers ticking away at schools. Only in America is it impossible to do anything about such waste using our political tools. None of our leaders has an answer, not one, although it isn't because there is no answer under the sun. Of the 200 nations on this earth, none have this rampant a problem, yet do we ask them for advice? Would, what would a solution be worth? And can't we, the richest nation on earth, afford the price? But oh no, not us. We're not up to that task. We'll never stoop to ask. We'd rather go on and on, you know, as if everything is just fine. As day in, day out, there is headline after headline. Only in America do tens of thousands fall to gun violence each year, and so many more spend their hearts worth consoling the survivors they hold dear. But let's have more memorials, more photos of dreamy-eyed innocence, happily smiling just the moment before. Let us post their words of wisdom, tell tales of their talents, their salient sparkling wit. Let us place candles, flowers, and teddy bears as markers supposedly apt or somehow fit. Let pulpit pounders pontificate by the score with more tearful, poignant regrets, more meaningful quotes and salutary notes and politicians stumping on anecdotes. 
and the intimate clips of live action horror. Let's have all those things and more details to hear, more shots to see. We never seem to get enough, do we? With hundreds of thousands of deaths over the decades, more than we've lost in all our wars, still we cannot find a way, still we have no answer for the heartless minds that kill. But in America, land of the free, home of the brave, we can't solve this, prevent it, or take it in hand. What would it take to do those things? We don't know. Our government hasn't taken a stand. So I'm more than bone tired, more than just puzzled. I'm angry at leaders who have nothing to say or do anything besides to cry it day after day. As for those who buy the talking heads on TV, who sit there lying, who then say, Lone wolf, God's mysterious ways, let us pray. All the editors, media mavens whose actions make no sense are exactly those who could make a difference. But instead, they make absolutely no difference at all by doing nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Only in America is murder thus inspired, even condoned, while the sheeple bleat their chorus of useless remorse, mimicking useless words from useless leaders who lead them on and on along this horrible course. All the victims and mourners say enough is enough. So I'm glad to see the youth of America organize and get tough. I say demand your certain inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I cheer you on as you get up, stand up, and show the right stuff. So that's the second piece. I mean, I was kind of fed up. And, and then speak, speaking of fed up, this is um, closing on humor. Sometimes you do that, you know. Yeah, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> so this is, I don't, uh, many people in this room are younger than I am. But back when I was growing up, there was a song called Don't Blame PG&E. And it was a local hit in the Bay Area. And I remembered that tune. But I've changed it. I've changed it to Don't Blame Old Donnie T the orange rumposaurus. Anyway, I, I can sing it fairly well, but I, I will go slowly because, you know, I can goof things up like nobody. I practice at that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yes. yes, Donald Trump is running for election. Our country's very favorite thing to dread. Always acting out dog whistling his minions which spells trouble for a democracy that's dead. He recently recanted almost nothing and runs upon his flatulent hot air. While there are many, many who detest him, this is what the man is running for. He wants his way and he always wants it now. He wants to bully everyone and how. He wants to have big hands and feet while poor Melania has to stir her meat. Who grinds the truth until it smells like shit? Whose grasp of facts proves he has no wit? Who will tell him he's at fault? There's no one known who can make him halt. Don't blame old Donnie T. He runs his mouth and makes no goddamn sense. He almost hung that idiot Mike Pence, who grabs the balls of network news and even makes God sing the blues, who has no cool and runs his mouth so hot, who cares only for the things he haven't got, who will tell him he's at fault. There's no one known who can make him halt. Don't blame old Donnie T, boys. Don't blame old Donnie T. Yeah. <laughs> He's the gift that oh keeps on giving. Oh, my God. 
That is just brilliant. It's so cabaret. Like, I'm like, where's my feathers? I, <laughs> oh, where's the glitter? Like, I, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yes, so much of the information I, I equip to like chips and dip. Like, what we do <laughs> is serving chips and dip, right? And if we want people to eat the dip, sometimes we have to find the right chip right I think humor and parody is salty is sometimes the best way to like deliver the dip yes, uh, yes. and certainly that is a wonderful way to deliver information in a way that people I think will unlock their ear canals and tune into yes um thank you very much I, I was glad to share that I got I got I was I, I felt good about it <laughs> It's if you are feeling like a little like you're like, should I be feeling this way? I feel like torn of feeling happy about this really fucking serious subject. Uh, that is valid. And that's the way you're supposed to feel. OK, like it, <laughs> poets and spoken word artists, we, we mess with your emotions. Uh, <laughs> it is what we do. <laughs> and Dan Brady has been around uh, a little while and he uh, absolutely knows how to pull up the right strings at the right times and strum on the drum of um, mixed emotions. So, yes, thank you so much for being here. Follow all of his stuff. Go to the open mics that he is a part of. I mean, it, it is just wonderful. I, I've enjoyed meeting you and um, all of the people who work uh, who work around you uh, are just wonderful. And you've been a joy to, to get to know. So thank you so much, Dan. And please come back. I mean, we'll, we'll do another one of these uh, readings before the end of the year to continue the conversation on gun violence. We are not going to stop doing these. I vow to continue to uh, host these events and, and to give a platform uh, for our work and our voices on gun violence. All right, so coming up to the mic and another person, oh my God, it's, it's very fitting. You know, Dan, you and the Magus Gustav Salas should do, do, you both should do a double feature for me at Word is Right. I'm gonna make a note of this because the two of you doing a double feature would be freaking fire. Magus and Dan, Dan, double feature. Uh, I would love to have the two of you, you come and, and double feature the two of you. And you'll know once you listen to the Magus read, <laughs> then you'll understand why I think these two would be a really good fit together. Uh, after Gustav, we have Elizabeth S. Wolf, Finn Hall, and DG Clearing. Those are the next four that we get. Uh, and then Maria del Rosario Perez, Henry L. Jones, and Fresh Linen to wrap us up tonight. Let me go ahead and uh, spotlight the Magus and uh... Hey, greetings, beloved poets. I am the Magus, Gustav Salas. This is Born of Nonsense. Born of Nonsense, this poem comes hither. The words, they crawl, they creep, they slither into my mind and onto the page. I write to try to assuage the rage that fills my heart when all I see is men behaving frightfully, slaughtering innocents without remorse, using legal guns, of course. For the Second Amendment is a suicide pact. How many mu more must die before we act? And this is a cover. Uh, the song is Melt the Guns by XTC. Programs of violence as entertainment brings the disease into your room. We know the germ, which is man-made in metal, is really the key to your own tomb. Prevention is better than cure. Bad apples affecting the pure. You'll gather your senses, I'm sure, then ah, 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 agree to melt the guns, melt the guns, melt the guns, and never more to fire them. Melt the guns, melt the guns, melt the guns, and never more desire them. Children will want them. Mothers supply them as long as your killers are heroes. And all the media will fiddle while Rome burns, acting like modern type Nero's. Prevention is better than cure, bad apples affecting the pure. 
You'll gather your senses, I'm sure, then ah ha 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 agree to melt the guns. Melt the guns, melt the guns, and never more to fire them. Melt the guns, melt the guns, melt the guns, and never more desire them. I'm speaking to the Justice League of America, the US of A. Hey, you, yes, you, yes, you in particular. When it comes to the judgment day and you're standing at the gates with your weaponry, you go dead down on one knee, clasp your hands in prayer, start quoting me, because we say our father we've managed to contain the epidemic in one place now let's hope they shoot themselves instead of others help to civilize the race now we've trapped the cause of the plague in the land of the free and the home of the brave if we listen quietly you can hear them shooting from grave to grave you ought to melt the guns melt the guns melt the guns melt the guns and never more to fire them melt the guns melt the guns melt the guns and never more desire them thank you oh my god let's go oh ah uh, the magus gustav solid let's go uh so now y'all know what i mean if we did magus and uh dan brady that would be an epic double feature like karen scott's nodding her head yes i know finn already uh signed off on it so fabulous uh i'll get in touch with y'all and we'll figure out a time uh to do a double feature probably october if y'all are down for it let's go all right super super excited um to to hear that <laughs> can, you, can you imagine like a full 20 minute set from each of them it would just be like the best show <laughs> let's go all right uh we're gonna keep going elizabeth s wolf uh you are up now followed by finn hall dg clearing those are the next three let me go ahead and unmute you thank y'all for being here welcome everyone who is joining us in the room uh uh, Lenita, welcome, welcome. So excited. Fresh Linen's family is uh, rolling in the room as well. Let me spotlight you, Elizabeth, and take away. All right, that's going to be a tough act to follow. Um, I'm going to read from some newer poems. I'm working on a collection. My daughter was born the week of Columbine. So I'm working on a braided collection that has some Docu poems, some research poems on some of the major school shootings or other big shootings in America. There's no shortage of those. Um, braided with some personal stories of my daughter growing up in those times. So I'm going to start uh, back at the beginning. And the first one is Wayne Harris. Wayne Harris called 911 on April 20th and said the Columbine shooter might be his son, Eric. He said his son was probably a part of the trench coat mafia. Wayne Harris kept a journal about his younger son, begun after Eric had made a few bombs. Maybe the garage smelled like propane. Maybe it was just a parent's intuition, the spidey sense tingling. Eric had a beef with a boy at school, but his dad thought the other boy, Brooks, was being dramatic no big deal, even though Brooks reported death threats. On April 20th, Eric saw Brooks outside the school and said, I like you now. Stuff's about to go down. You should leave. And Brooks booked it. When he heard shots firing, Brooks was the first person to call the police. Maybe Wayne knew as he filled his steno pad with denial Maybe he knew something was wrong, but before Columbine happened, it was hard to imagine Columbine. Maybe when the police searched the Harris house that day and found more bombs, evacuating the home before the gunman's bodies were identified, maybe that's when Wayne Harris knew he made the right call. Dylan's mother, Susan Klebold, gives a TED Talk. 
Sue Klebold says she did not know. She asks herself if she was a terrible mother. Sue Klebold loved her son. Sue Klebold apologizes if her son hurt you or anyone else in your family, sincerely apologizes. Two years before the Columbine shooting, Dylan wrote in a diary about cutting himself and that he wanted to die. His mother did not know then, but now she sees that there was time to get him help. She did not know, he did not ask. There were no guns in the Klebold household. Sue Klebold asks, how was it so easy for her troubled son to obtain so many guns? And why has this not changed given what we all know now but did not know back then. Sue Klebold views Columbine through the lens of her son's suicide. She does not know when Dylan's thoughts of suicide morphed into plans for spectacular murder. Sue Klebold studies suicide. She says, if love were enough, there wouldn't be so many suicides. Ergo, love is not enough. Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris are icons for spectacular murder. Their parents loved them, but it was not enough. Ben, we hardly knew ye. Columbine babies reach high school, fall 2014. Ben was a friend, a good friend, who brought candy to sad girls. He visited our house with his buds, the awkward boys. The kids played manhunt around town, which is like tag meets capture the flag, but with kissing. Ben made a Facebook page as Eric Harris. He sent friend requests to all the gang. My daughter had to ask who Eric Harris was, but she didn't tell me that the boy behind the page was Ben. She didn't want me to worry or ban Ben from the house. The probation department in Littleton, Colorado, said Eric Harris had the potential to do well in life and was very intelligent. The guidance department at our local high school said the same about Ben. He had friends. He tried out for the local track team. Ben was a wizard with video editing and computers. He dubbed metallic music with reverberating screams into Columbine security footage. No one told me that either. We were on our way home from my in-laws when my daughter got a call in the car from a boy who was crying. It was about Ben. My daughter had missed a call from Ben the day before when she was at the movies. Sometimes even kids miss calls. But there was a voicemail from a very drunk Ben saying he loved her. He called not long before he went to the ER for alcohol poisoning, not long before he was discharged against medical advice, went home with his hardworking father and shot himself. The ambulance arrived quickly and too late. The sitting rooms at the wake were crowded with choked up parents and teachers cradling cider and seltzer water as if they were stiff drinks. The porch was mobbed with mingling kids. Pictures of Ben from the homecoming dance with my daughter were on display. Parents kept asking the kids if Ben was bullied. The police came to our house to listen to the voicemail. They recorded the interview, taking notes around the kitchen table. A few hours later, the local cop came back with a state trooper to ask about Columbine. The cops were wondering if Ben was a potential school shooter who succeeded only at suicide. Six sophomore boys carried a coffin heavy with questions. 
Ben was a sweet, sassy, awkward boy, fascinated by guns and his idols, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. He died at 15. He broke a girl's heart and all of us were changed. And I have one more that takes us up to Parkland. Uh, this was written as part of the same collection, but it was last fall when Nicholas Cruz's sentencing was in the news. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, Parkland, Florida, 2018. And there's an epigraph. He looked like a typical high school student. And for a quick moment, I thought, could this be the person who I need to stop? The officer that arrested Nicholas Cruz. Does it matter if his mother is dead or in jail? Or was the damage already done in the time they shared the alcohol in her blood and the bits from her own bones that make up his body? The lawyers argue over images of his brain, what they do or don't show. Is it admissible at this stage? The lawyers argue over the doctors who argue over words and what they mean. No one argues that Nicholas Cruz walked into the school with an AR-15 and hundreds of bullets that within the next seven minutes contained four long minutes when he fired and fired and fired and fired on the first floor, on the second floor, on the next floor, in the hallways, in the classrooms, into closets, into corners, bullets, 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 blood, 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 blood so many fragments of bone, so many texts and calls to mom and dad, to brothers and sisters, so many fractured lives. Despite all that we knew before Cruz went in, on that Valentine's Day, an ordinary Wednesday afternoon, after so very many red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag moments, we know what to look for now. Now we know. And yet here's another kid with an AR-15 and yet another hashtag place name, another site where families gathered, where officers entered after agonizing hours to announce there are no more survivors left at the scene. If you are still here, the wall of sound travels for several blocks, they say, anguished wails and bellowing screams. We are all still there, balanced in the cleavage between before and after. We are all still watching ex Gonzalez stand at the mic in silence for the four excruciating minutes of slaughter out of the six minutes and 20 seconds they spent on that stage and crew spent rampaging in the Parkland school. We are all on site. We are all marching for our lives, shouting atop of cars, and yet somewhere out there, blending into the crowd of careless, laughing, dancing people, of terrorized, bleeding, fleeing people, is the next Nicholas Cruz. Thank you. <sighs> Spectacular murder and the walls of sound travels for many blocks. Um, it, I like want to crawl up in a ball and just like cry. Um, it's a really hard collection to work on because I want to write it, but I can only do small bits at a time without getting overwhelmed. So, uh, yeah. It, 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 it was. Sorry, go ahead. It will be forthcoming no, no. for a while, I think. <laughs> well, when you're ready to do it, if you need um, a place to launch it, you have a home here. Um, so, and if not, that's okay too. But yeah, the submissions for this um, anthology were overwhelming. I was like, no one's going to submit. We're this little no-name press in the desert. And, you know, I'm just like a little, little no-name person um, 
with this idea and it, the uh, outpouring uh, from the community was amazing. And uh, going through everyone's work was, it was humbling. And so it, yeah, uh, my daughter was, was two years old when Uvalde happened. I mean, when, on, when Newtown happened. And I remember having to take her to daycare and asking the people there, like what their um, emergency plans were. And then she was 12 years old when uh, Uvalde happened. And I was like, 10 years, 10 years, nothing has changed. Um, when will it be enough? And that's what really sparked <clears throat> in my soul to do this project. but it wouldn't be here without all of you. An idea is great. An idea without execution is, is nothing. Uh, poetry uh, that's not published is the bullshit, right? We gotta publish it. We have to get it out. We have to read it. We have to speak it. We have to continue to push it out into the world. Um, otherwise we're just um, musing ourselves and uh, we're not bringing about the change that the, the next generation deserves. So thank you so much for, for doing that and looking back as far as, um, as, as you did. As moms and parents, it's hard for us. So thank you for being patient, uh, those who are maybe watching. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> I'm in the fight. I'm in the fight. Uh, I don't, I, I've had enough grief to last a lifetime, so I'm fine with it. I'm used to it. Uh, we can keep going. And if you can't carry it, I can carry it for you uh, as well. So uh, you need someone to help leverage your grief and your weight. Uh, you got me, you got this room full of authors and contributors and poets as well. So lean on all of us as we move forward. <clears throat> Next up, we have Finn Hall, all the way from Scotland. Uh, I'm so, man, uh, is just wonderful. And I love everything that he does. And I'm so excited he's part of this book. Um, and we get to like swap anthologies. It's not like swapping spit. I mean, I can't get mono from swapping anthologies, but uh, you can. <laughs> yeah, you got to have some humor. You've got to even carry a cover to it. You got to have some humor in this. It's such a heavy topic. But uh, I am so excited. My with who I get to work with outside of American New York City, I'm looking at Dapper people. You were on Dexter, Maria the Rosario Perez were in three. Uh, Finn, uh, let me spotlight you and um, take. All right, you were breaking up there, but I get to on spotlight now. So, hello, proud to be part of this book. <coughs> uh, perhaps a third song of the evening. And I can't sing either. So <laughs> this, this is Bang Bang, rewritten for the 21st century. I was five and she was six. We rode on skateboards made of sticks. I wore black and you wore red. Now we both are dead. Bang Bang, he shut us down. Bang Bang, that awful sound. Bang Bang, no cops around. Bang Bang. The gunman shut us down. We grew up in a quite small town. We thought we knew everyone around. We'd laugh and sing and run and play up until that fateful day. Bang, bang. He shut us down. Bang, bang. That awful sound. Bang, bang. No cops around. Bang, bang. The gunman shut us down. The cops hid out, scared to die, didn't care about our cries, waited until we were dead, silence in the room of dread. Bang, bang, he shut us down. Bang, bang, that awful sound. Bang, bang, no cops around. Bang, bang, the gunman shut us down. Music played and people sang, and just for me the church bells rang after echoes from a gun. Hopes and prayers saved no one. Bang, bang, shut us down. Bang, bang, the awful sound. Bang, bang, no cops around. Bang, bang, the gunman shut us down. Bang, bang, the doors shined. 
extra sales after killing time. Bang, bang. This is why it won't end. Dollars and guns always best friend. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang. This is a couple more. This is one I wrote at the time as well. <clears throat> it's called Hide and Seek. On his own, but supported by at least 50 senators, over 200 House members and the NRA. He walked past the good guys with gun that day, armed to the teeth, protected from within, crawling out from beneath their rocks and stones, offering more thoughts and prayers as if they really care. As the dollar signs light up their eyes, but all of this is no surprise. To regular folk who believe in human rights, the right to choose to live, to read the books they need to read, and not to watch the children bleed when DNA is all they need to know. And I'm gonna finish with this one, and I usually shout it out loud, but I can't because it's pretty much 11 o'clock at night here, and <laughs> it's dark and quiet. So this is actually, it's called America. There's blood on the streets, now there's blood on the sheets as the redundant coat hangers come out of their closets. Been working, lurking away for so long. 50 years without tears, 50 years without worry that your life is in danger, 50 years without a backseat stranger in dimly lit rooms being your only answer. Now women's rights, human rights are secondary to power and that's not right. And the cry of white middle class males should not be heard as it's absurd that two fifths don't fit that category. The decision makers, the democracy haters, the common denominator in this hour is power. Control in the name of freedom, control in the name of uncaring, as if all babies are born of love and intimate sharing. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. These words mean nothing anymore. And the women who wrote it is spinning in her grave, I believe, as the fools that rule think of nothing but themselves and are looking through the books on their shelf to see what other laws their egos can overrule. And now the abuse of women and children and the weak and the poor are secondary, as is the women's right to choose, to even discuss with those that care, those that share their lives. Now all they are is red-dressed wives being told what to do with their wounds, as the wealthy can covertly fly to other countries and privately pay for their needs. But the rest must stay and secretly find the backseat room to bleed and hopefully survive. Unless the legal concealed gun in the hands of the scared right-wing coward decides this forlorn wife was a threat to his life. Thank you. Oh, oh my gosh, let's go Finn Hall. I'm hearing screaming outside my house. I hope everyone's okay. So, I don't know. Sometimes it's a Saturday, there'd be crazies around. Uh, but thank you so much. Uh, dollars and guns always uh, best friends. Straight up, right? That that pretty much sums up. That sums everything up. All right. Next up, we got DG Clearing, Maria del Rosario Perez, Henry L. Jones, and Fresh Linen. Four more to go tonight. If anyone is in the anthology who is here, like Shocky G, for example, um, who would like to read let me know uh and and i can get you uh get you in uh get you on and if not that's okay do if you're just here to listen that is uh totally fine we're running a little early so i want to make sure and hold space for as many uh who want to be here as possible uh dg let me find you let me ask you to unmute i'll do my great my advocate <laughs> let me unmute you <laughs> and spotlight you for everyone 
and, and uh, have at it, sir. Did were you, did you get asked That's to unmute? Uh, now, hey, Marissa, it is. Oh, perfect. Hi. Yeah, it, it's so good go to be pass, here. Go. Oh, yeah, you know. By the way, I have. My go Packers, ahead. I have my Packers hoodie right here. Oh, good, um, good. You're, you're, I'm, you're already, tonight, so. I'm already wearing it oh, uh, for, nice, for nice. the fall. <laughs> yeah, go. All right, so I just got yeah, to we'll, interject we'll see this how from time this year, to time. So. This is such a uh, yeah. You know, Mar Marissa, you're, you're not just a, a little publishing company out in the middle of the desert. Uh, you're a pretty brave woman for doing this in a lot of the books that, that uh, you've published for people. Uh, I, I really have to commend you on, uh, on all of your, your endeavors. Uh, and thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Marissa, uh, for doing this and, and all you're doing. So. I have one poem for you tonight. Uh, I normally don't uh, do a synopsis on my poems, but uh, it's called Casey Goodson. Casey Goodson was murdered in two, uh, 2020 uh, of December uh, by a deputy sheriff or by a sheriff by the name of Jason Mead. He had just gone to the subway store and was opening up his door and was uh, shot in the back five times. I don't know if people remember that, uh, but that's what this poem is about. Uh, for Casey and, and his family and all those involved, this is Casey Goodson. Casey Goodson. Casey Goodson fell to his kitchen floor, five shots in the back, his keys in the door. Bang, bang, bang subway on the floor. Casey Goodson fell to the kitchen floor. His little brother saw him murdered in the door. Blood from the butchering went splat, splat, splat on the shiny linoleum floor. Casey Goodson fell to the kitchen floor. Grandma saw her grandson die like her family before. Help, 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 she said, as he died on her cleanly waxed floor. Casey Goodson fell to the kitchen floor, shot and splattered, just coming through the door. He didn't do anything. Now a young black man dead on the floor. Casey Goodson dead on the floor. The cop shot an innocent man for having his keys in the door. Bang, bang, bang. Now he's dead on the shiny waxed kitchen floor. Thank you everyone for reading and being here tonight and all of your poems, uh, they are so powerful and strong. Uh, the best to you. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm not going to the New Mexico Poetry Summit. I wish I was, but everybody have a nice time there, please. Thank you. Back to you, Marissa. Oh, thank you so much, CG. Clearing everyone. Yes. No, thank you. Uh, we would not be here doing what we're doing if it wasn't for all of you. And so thank all of you for being um, courageous and brave to be on, stamp your ticket and get on this train uh, with us because we got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, we got work to do, but we're not afraid of work and no one is going to outwork me this year. So let's go. Maria de Rosario Perez, uh, I got you up next, beautiful. And Henry L. Jones, you are on deck. Fresh linen, you are in two. That would make you in the hole. Uh, let's see where my Maria is. Maria, you ready? Uh, let me see where she is. Uh, there she is. Hi, beautiful. Let me ask you to unmute. Uh, it's weird because on the Chromebook, it changes when someone turns on their camera, it moves them to a different, like the front page. So if I'm on a, anyways. All right, uh, Maria Rosario Perez, uh, the Rosario Perez is our uh, co-chair for our community outreach program. It is a, a program we decided to start 
within the contributors of American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence so that we can not only work with other organizations, but we can plan, uh, we can set up uh, yeah. fundraising, donations, promotions, do all promotions. kinds of, of other things, not just Right, yeah, not just here locally, but also globally. So any of the contributors watching, if you would like to be part of this uh, co um, uh, committee, uh, please let us know. And if there are things you can bring to the table or you wanna help out in any way, we're always looking for volunteers. And we like to pour from within our uh, contributor community and continue to grow with that. So I will let her uh, take the reins. Henry, you're next, Fresh Linen, you are, uh, in the I am putting my email in the chat in case anybody wants to uh, get in touch with me about being part of a contributor. Okay. So I, um, let me see. Okay, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. No, not that, not that. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. I had done a drawing for, uh, I submitted a drawing and I it was just like a quickie, a quickie drawing. Um, but, uh, and so since then I've been able to, uh, work on it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to show it as I, let me see, where am I? As I read, let me see if I can do this. Okay. Uh, let me see, let me see. Let me see. No, I don't want the graphics. Where is it? Uh, hold on, I'll, I'll figure this out. Let me see. You're sure. fine. Take your time. Okay. It's all good. Okay. Can you all see this? Yes, you can. There you go. Yes. Oh, that doesn't belong there. So this is the graphic that I made. Um, it's Our Lady of the Innocents. And it is, um, it's a drawing that I made. Can you all see it? Yes, we see it. You see it? Okay. I wish I could make it bigger. But uh, let me, let me, I, I can't make it bigger. If I make it bigger, I lose it. But okay. So, you know, being a Catholic and uh, the Virgin Mary uh, dedicated to many things as she appears to her people, I was inspired to do this, Our Lady of the Innocents. So her mantle is the drawings made by children. And she holds a shot, uh, a child that was killed by bullets. And then at her feet are the other children. And uh, I was able to create this as, as I was listening to everybody. So, uh, what is what was contributed, submitted, and published in the art book um, was my first attempt at this drawing. And so this is somewhat what I visualized, and but I wasn't able to submit it with these graphics down here. Um, it is in the art book. So I share this with you all. Okay. I am going to stop 
the screen share. Now I am going to read something that I wrote right now. Okay. Well, not right now, but as, as I was listening to everybody. It says, owning guns. I am not against owning a firearm. I am not against owning a firearm. I'm from Texas. Pick up trucks with gun racks, trucks left unlocked, windows down at the grocery store parking lot. No one messed with them. We knew respect. I am not against owning a firearm. I'm from the border town of El Paso. Ciudad Juarez Chihuahua is the sister city. Chihuahua was a critical region of the Mexican Revolution. The Adelitas with their gun belts across their chests, with their bullet belts across, crisscrossed across their chest, fought shoulder to shoulder with their men. I am not against owning a firearm. My paternal grandfather lived in a pulque hacienda in Tlaxcala, Mexico. He hunted for his family's, his family's dinner. Yet one day a rifle backfire took his arm. I am not against owning a firearm. My father owned a rifle. It was in the back of his closet. He owned it for protection of his home. He never pulled it out. I never saw him fire it, but I knew it was there. An odd comfort of sorts, much like our dogs roaming our fenced yard. I am not against owning a firearm, a pistol, a revolver, an old Winchester rifle. Oh, but I am against the latest fads of military grade weapons used against, used. Okay, hold on. I am not against owning a firearm, a pistol, a revolver, a null Winchester rifle. Oh, but I am against the latest fads of military grade weapons used by the average Joe Blow walking down the street. Oh, but I am against the mass shootings caused by Joe Blow and his toys. Oh, but I am against a child treating his daddy's gun like a toy. What does the child know about the reality of the mechanisms and their bullets? I am not against owning a firearm. Oh, but I am against apathetic, lazy, self-centered legislatures who like leeches survive from the pocket lining of special interest groups and care not for children shot in schools. Oh, but I am against the social issues that have led to the death of at least 25,198 people who died from gun violence in the US as of the 1st of August, 2023. I am not against owning a firearm. Oh, but I am against the deaths of gun violence so far this year of 879 teens and 170 children. Thank you. Oh, oh my God, Maria Rosario Perez, let's go. Oh, um, but I am, again, all of it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read um, one of the, one of the ones that was uh, published. One of the poems that was published. Uh, let me see. Why the Wailing Women? 
I miss hijos, my babies, my children, comfort, heal, advocate. No preguntes por qué. La Llorona will never forget. Consuela, sana, aboga. Comprendes que no importa cómo los perdió. They were formed in her womb. Brotaron de su vientre. Lloraron. Su confort fue interrumpido. They cried. Their life was ending. When will the killing end? Cuando termina la matanza. And the wailing doesn't stop. Muere uno más de la mano del otro. Two more die at the hand of the other. And their children die again and again and again. Y de nuevo vuelven a morir. And they are ripped from her heart. De sus, de sus entrañas los arrebatan. Cuando termina la matanza. And the wailing doesn't stop. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh my gosh. It's, it's chilling the way you rec uh, recount these things. And I do want to point out the fact that, that we are not necessarily calling for an abolition to the second amendment. We're calling to an abolition of idiots, uh, shooting f innocent people and being able to access guns that can shoot lots of innocent people very quickly and the use of uh, protective body gear to protect said person. Uh, we, we were calling for an end uh, to the bloodshed, to the violence, to the loss of life. That's what we're calling for. Responsible gun ownership is, you know, that's not what we're, we're not talking about that, right? Uh, so please understand the difference before you go getting all up in a huff about what it is we're talking about. Maybe listen a little bit, go back and watch all of the lives that we've done. Because I don't believe that any, any one of us is saying you shouldn't be able to uh, protect your family or yourself or your property. We're saying that you shouldn't be allowed to go into a, a school and kill a bunch of children or go to a concert and shoot a bunch of people from a, with a high power rifle and a scope from an elevated position. We're saying you shouldn't be able to kill people. Uh, and then yourself, it is, is absolutely not, um, it's not okay. And there are a lot of other peripheral things that affect and, this. And, and, and that was my point in reading, in writing this, you know. Uh, you know, as I pointed out in, in the poem, um, I grew up in Texas for Pete's sakes. You know, cowboys and guns and rifles and, 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 and all sorts of, all sorts of, you know, stuff. You know, you needed a rifle to kill a coyote so it wouldn't attack your sheep. You know, you sure. you, you needed a, 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 a rifle to go hunting, to put food on your table. Okay. You know, uh, the Mexican Revolution, Mexico, you know, it's like, yeah, I grew up with the knowledge of guns. But yes. not... Joe Blow off the street doesn't need an AK-47, whatever for. And I think the key word that Maria said was she grew up with the knowledge about guns. Uh, when you have a six-year-old who is climbing on a dresser to get their mother's gun from a bag and you don't understand um, the gravity of what it means to pull the trigger at six years old and you aim it and fire it at your teacher or you, uh, you know, you have these children digging out uh, guns because their parents are not, not only not responsibly locking them down uh, and, and keeping the bullets separate from the guns, but they're also not teaching their children appropriate uh, ways of handling and using um, guns. It's, it's very, uh, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. A couple of weeks ago, we had a five-year-old shot and killed in a drive-by shooting because she was at a sleepover and they were in the front room of the house and uh, bullets came through the front of the house and struck and killed the five-year-old. So if, if those who pulled the trigger only thought about the fact that there's a child on the other end of this bullet, a five-year-old should not understand 
the sensation of lead in their body before they die. That is not anything that any child should ever have to feel. And so for those who choose to um, have guns, understanding the responsibility behind them and how to use them and how to handle them. And if you choose to teach your children about guns, to teach them how to be responsible uh, and that life is so very precious. And um, for those who choose to do harm with them, that is what our call and our cries uh, are for. So please, before you get all in your way about what it is we're doing here, understand that that is our, our mission is to end the unnecessarily uh, brutal violence uh, behind this gun violence we're experiencing. So thank you so much, Maria, for being here uh, today. Thank and you. thank you for your work. Uh, Henry L. Jones is up next. I'm so excited this poet is here. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so excited. This man, y'all have not heard him read. Y'all need to like <laughs> go follow him and listen, uh, buy his book, do everything you need to. Uh, next up, we have Fresh Linen uh, to finish us out tonight. So two more, so, so don't go anywhere. It's ending on, on a high note, I promise you. Uh, so Henry, the floor is all Hey everyone, yes. Marissa, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for uh, Red and Green Books, the anthology. People have responded uh, online. Uh, thank you for this event and especially the people that hung in there. I know people had to leave for different reasons to this, to the end. We've been here, we've had some powerful moving works, words that needed to be said and I feel honored to be a part of the book and to be amongst such gifted poets. Um, this is what it's all about, reaching each other from all over the world, sharing experiences and we're like, oh, look at this. We got some common shit going on here. You know, mm, we need to come up with some solutions and we're gonna come up with some solutions. I truly believe that. I'm going to share some poems related to gun violence. I've been writing about this all my life. And when I heard about the anthology, I had a specific poem I wanted to submit because I've been approached with guns. I've been shot at when I was young, when we, we lived in Dayton, Ohio, and guns pulled over me when I lived in Chicago, tried to rob me and, and once in Detroit. Um, but, you know, it, it, it changes you. It changes you. And um, so here's some, here some um, poems I'd like to share. This first one is titled, History of the Gun, A Life of Purpose. Are you seeking your purpose in life while tirelessly working toward the dream? Fear flows through the, your throbbing veins, currents of hatred to feed bloodshot eyes. What you see with them becomes clear. My staring defiance, lacking fear of you, which makes you afraid for your life or felt uncomfortable. Remembering the years of torture, hatred and deaths, a gradual genocide, echoing through the bloody centuries, endless memories of pain and madness and grief, touching deeply within my heart, many sorrow songs that want justice still. Holding found bodies, some clinging to life, others empty shells in our arms. Countless times looking up to the sky to scream beyond the uttered prayers. With quivering dry lips again and again, stop killing us in this nightmare. I try to wake from it each night. But instead, you make the solution, condone the policy, applaud the effort to shoot anything black or brown dead. You've been taught to shoot to kill. Believe me, I've been taught to die. Your family picnics held long shores. We find slaughtered meat baptized by you. Death summons the rivers to wash away the crimson stains of history's pages. But those books are hidden from us, or the photos of lynches in the park. Ritual pride, shared memories of joy. We only knew torment, but it continues. Your bullets entered my silhouette flesh, becoming finally 
an unmoved target. Then you smile with a chest full of pride. You're protecting and ending my kind. You bring home trophies from the hunt. Again, I send home tears of my wants life. Realize the purpose given to you is the hunters can play and the prey must die. History of the gun. The next poem is titled, I Am Dead, You Know. I am the flesh, target silhouette smiles, daring you to smile back. Paper flying in the wind, though, a stray piece of freedom longing to find a place to land, but blowing wind gives me the illusion of flight. As though I had wings to lift myself from this stirring free fall, fear covers my eyes as I believe the ground is about to grab me and snatch me from the wind, throwing me onto the ground. Where are you going? The earth screams. Where have you been? The earth whispers. Show me your hands, the earth demands. I tremble in the gravel, wondering if that road will show me a path to run away. Keep your hands up. Don't move, don't move. Why are you here? Where are you going? Are you on parole? Do you have a gun? Do you have drugs? Keep your hands up. Don't move, don't move. Why are you moving? What are you doing? Stop, put your gun down, put it down, put it down. I feel dead inside today, like the wind has stolen from my lungs, my breast shallow, leaking into the wind, carrying messages. Words leak out of my mouth like drool, framing from my chapped lips, whispering dry, hushed prayers, stomach empty, making room for the vomited grief, telling us it's gumbo. Time to eat. Falling into our laps, just eat silently. The spoonfuls of blood, hot bullets into the flesh, echo through the holes, pouring blood, sacrifice into a bowl, a crimson tears for a libation. Drink and remember. Eat, drink, and be merry. For somewhere, for the gun, you will die. And the <sighs> Thank you. The last one, it's a shorty. Um, it was published in um, Ice Flow Journal. Uh, and actually, I think I sent it off around the time that I submitted to this journal, this anthology. And, um, and this was a consideration, but I, I really wanted um, American Graveyard to have the one dedicated to my, um, my godmother about her, her shooting. Um, so this is the one with Ice Flow Journal. The justice of bullets for crowd control. I am dead. Words thrown, words thrown at my face, bullets shot into my head. Attack dogs keep me in place. It's okay if I end up dead. Evidence is dead. Mourn me virtual distant eyes, see the red holes in my chest, lips split out, spit out their old dusty lies, show the body cam on the vest. My child is dead. A grieving mother's tears rain down, father's hands try to lift his child still as blood fills the cracks in the ground, outline chalk lines drawn to reveal. Their eyes are dead. We're looking for another way. Find a new path, find new paths of freedom's dream, outpouring loud words we say. We are human! Hear our screams. Hear our screams. Hear our screams before we die. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh my God, Henry L. Jones, y'all. Y'all don't know, I'm, oh my God. 
American graveyard is like a melting pot of all these incredible people I've had the opportunity to come across. And like, I don't know if y'all have ever heard each other or not before this, but damn it, I hope y'all follow each other now uh, because everyone on their own is doing so many incredible things. Uh, so collectively, um, I want to be a force to be reckoned with. And Fresh Linen is, is no doubt a part of that force to be reckoned with. Uh, Fresh is coming to us from uh, Europe. He is active duty right now in the military with his beautiful wife, Cindy, and their daughter. So thank you uh, so much, Fresh, for your service. Thank you for, for defending this country and everything that we stand for. Thank you to your family for supporting you in those efforts and for being part of Red or Green Books. Fresh was one of our original poets who we published here at Red or Green Books. Uh, help pave the way for so many of the poets who have come now uh, since. And, and I hope you look at that list. It's a very long list. You know, like, uh, so we have the New Mexico Poetry Summit coming up fresh. And I went back and I looked at everyone's books and all of the work that we have published. Uh, and it is uh, just shy of 600,000 words uh, that we have published in the three years uh, that we have been going over 50 books of poetry over 200 people and fresh linen is definitely one of the founding um bricks in that foundation of laying it for all of those who have now come right so like your legacy is is part of this organization is part of what we do so thank you so much uh for those who don't know fresh's wife is ella diem and she did the cover for american graveyard art book this is her her piece right here she submitted it as just a, a submission and i was like oh my god can we have that be the cover please as she blew me away with the cover she is now a best here for red or green books and so uh it is just continual generosity from the community pushing us all forward uh towards a, a common goal and i'm not going to speak to the stuff fresh has got going on because i'm gonna let him make any announcements he wants to but this guy he's got stuff happening right so if you are not following what this guy is doing you need to like find him follow him get on board uh what an incredible way to end the show today and i will spotlight fresh linen and cool uh can you guys hear me uh, i can't see anybody but i'm assuming that's a yes yes we got you Okay, perfect. Hey, so I wanted to shout out Marissa again. Uh, kind of like being a, one of those first people to give me a chance, right? And never met in person. And uh, just seeing me perform virtually and then uh, just giving me a shot and calling me up and challenging me. And yeah, it's just awesome how far we come like this from performing virtually to actually making something tangible uh, multiple times. And yeah, I really appreciate you and I really appreciate you using for art for activism. Uh, so this piece, uh, hopefully you guys have heard the song, This is America by Childish Gambino. The song itself, like you might not be able to get all the subtle messages, but if you were to watch the music video, the music video kind of shows that America cares about our second amendment more than they care about people or children, uh, so to speak. So I came up with the, the title baby bullet because we were treating, it felt like we were treating guns uh, more precious than we were treating uh, children because uh, Roe v. Wade was happening during this time as well when the call was actually, so it was just like perfect, horrible timing. And uh, unfortunately, I think this anthology is going to age really well until something uh, changes. Uh, I'm gonna send some links in the chat, but uh, I have some things going on. And uh, once we're done recording and live, uh, I wanna share with you guys because this poem has been animated into a short film and was submitted uh, to some film festivals. But unfortunately, because of that, I can't uh, premiere it on social media. So if you, once we're done with the session, if you wanna uh, get a premiere of the short film, uh, I'll be sharing that uh, with you guys. And uh, yeah, here's my links. And I've recorded Baby Bullet as well. So if you wanna stream it and hear me perform it with music and uh, sound effects and everything like that, it's on all streaming platforms. And I just released the track uh, called Intent Versus Impact. It's another poem that I do with another poet uh, about a couple that's going through relationship issues. So not a totally different topic, but 
Uh, go ahead, check those out. You can look up Fresh Linen on any streaming platform, including YouTube, and uh, hear my poetry there. But yeah, I'm gonna jump into the poem. Born of combustion and carbon, equipped with defense mechanisms and sight with no ability to see, destined to be held in hands and arms with love, swaddled in privilege, breastfed excuses, oxytocin released when fed by parents, all a part of the formula for propaganda, propped up, tucked away on display for every bystander. Your first breath signals someone else's last, guns. You are America's newborns, gun wields more reproductive rights than woman, quick to adopt a gun and abandon responsibility after triggered. The words from a gun's mouth divorce bullets who abort future parents and children, foreign bodies, inherit familiar projectiles, gunshot residue, be an arsenal fully loaded with teardrops, left to water family trees, now crooked. Our ordinance for ordinance means ordinarily the roots to the problem gets covered up with dirt. Soiled Second Amendment, be a love letter from my famous forefathers who fronted father figures for freedom, turn a mob into a legion, his story now a days, fists don't have the caliber, but the trunk got 22. Rifle, ricochet, revolver, rounds of hollow tips over rounds of solid fists were raised around secondhand gun smoke, fully automatic asthmatics, inhaling hope. But who could afford to hold their breath? Schools and places of worship are no longer gun-free zones. Teachers expected to hit the mark in more than one way. The future looking like gun shop coupons instead of box tops. Shotgun slugs instead of apples on desktops. What's next? Birthday gifts turn into bulletproof backpacks. It's hard to vote for change when registering to vote has more steps than buying a gun. Ballots written in firing pen ink. But whatever it takes to keep the rocket's red glare out of the eyes of the hateful and mentally unstable. In the meantime, be careful. Any day your children can meet pistol, grip them tightly while they're still warm and pray this cold world never gives them a full metal jacket. Our screens show us news clips of who's clipped by magazine clips. Video go viral of somebody's son being lead poisoned time after time. Now the world go blind watching sun eclipse. You see gun, China might be your mama, but America raised you. Gun equal good. Gun equal safe. Gun equal targets. Gun equals intent. Gun equals impact. Gun equals problem, gun equals solved, gun equals blood, gun equals contraction, gun equals scream, gun equals breathe, gun equals hashtag, gun equals squeeze, gun equals protection, gun equals or else, gun equals fear, gun equals control, gun equals fear, gun equals control. Who pulled the trigger? I don't know, we did. Don't you get it? Gun equal freedom. Congratulations. It's a beautiful, healthy weapon. Will that be cash or card? Thank you. <sighs> Let's go fresh slid in. Oh my God. You weren't ready. Y'all were not ready. I can see it on your faces. Y'all were not ready. Uh, I don't know how to make you ready. It's fresh linen. Like there's no way to be ready for that man. Uh, but don't go anywhere because he's going to make you less ready and give you his, uh, give you his, uh, in, so just, just stay, don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll finish the recording and he'll come back and he'll do you his, uh, his piece that we are not going to record and we're not going to live stream. So if your ass is not here in the zoom room, you're going to miss out. Don't know what to do with that. Um, okay. So let me see what I can do about the chat. I have someone asking to receive the chat. I'm pretty sure I can save the chat. Can I do that? How do y'all, how do I save the chat? How, I, well, okay. I know my my desktop, my main desktop, will save it automatically. Uh, but there, you should have a spot where you can save the chat. Um, so try and click buttons. <laughs> try and click buttons to see if you can uh, save the chat. Uh, I know that I can save the chat is, oh, I see a copy. No, that is definitely not 
it and I, I'm afraid to press the wrong button. Like, I am so not tech savvy. Um, but I'm like really afraid of that. I don't see a place, but if, if there's a way that I can save the chat, I will save the chat and send it to you. Three dots in the chat. Okay, the three dots in the chat give me participa participants can chat with no one, hosts and co-hosts, everyone or everyone and anyone directly. The three dots in the chat only give me that because uh, I am a co-host, I can't. But if you're not a host or a co-host, you might be able to save the chat. So click the three dots uh, and see if you're able to save the chat. Uh, yes, it's been an emotionally stunning uh, evening. All right, so don't forget, please go and get copies of American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence. We have the literary book and we have the art book. Both of them you can get together on the website for only $40. If you just want one, the literary book is $25, the art book is $20. Uh, if you want to do a sponsor, a senator, it's only $15. You guys, if you don't know what to do, sponsor a senator. It's $15. We're covering the cost of everything else and it'll ship anonymously. So you don't have to worry about being uh, attached to that. And we work through a PO box. So it's, you know, there's a lot of anonymity when it comes to um, shipping uh, these things. Now, for those of you who are uh, in the anthology, if you are needing some books for a promotional thing or you're going to a live event or there's something happening, please reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, we can figure something out. Otherwise, we are looking for angel investors for volume two. So if anyone knows anyone who wants to help us uh, launch volume two, please let us know. Uh, that that is uh, definitely a project that we are, are holding tight to the vest that I would really, really like to launch next year. All right, thank you so much to everyone who came through. Don't leave yet because Fresh Linen is going to uh, give us something very special when we uh, when we stop the recording, okay? Uh, please, please go to the website, Red or Green. Red R E A D. Come to the New Mexico Poetry Summit in September. If you don't have a kids, get your ticket. Uh, there's so many incredible things happening here. Please like, share, subscribe, follow me on YouTube. Follow this video to YouTube uh, just as soon as I possibly can. You'll see the book launch for American Graveyard is already up there. It's on YouTube. If anyone has special technology experience and maybe they want to pull a line or two from everyone's reading today and do a found poem reel. That would be really dope. Let me know. I would love to find someone who knows how to do that because I don't know how to do that. You can either teach me to fish or you can fish for me, but either way, if there's someone who wants to come on and maybe help out, and uh, do some reels out of the American Graveyard uh, readings, that would be helpful. We're gonna shoot to do one more of these before the holidays uh, to give people an opportunity to read who perhaps were not here today. And we're going to, yeah, we're just gonna keep going. Uh, stamp your ticket, let's go. Uh, thank you so much for following us at Red or Green Books. The word is right, W-R-I-T-E is our other sister platform. Thank you uh, so much everyone for that. Dan Brady and um, the Magus, I'm gonna hit you guys up for a double feature. It's gonna be so much. But otherwise, peace and blessings. Thank you so much everyone for being here. I'm gonna cut the recording, so don't go because you gotta hear Fresh's thing, okay? Uh, the rest of you who aren't here, ha 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 ha. <laughs> all right we'll see you all next time i love y'all i'm gonna stop stop the recording and i'm gonna stop the live stream see you next time